call to order the meeting of the Common Council for Thursday, November 10, 2022. Clerk. Thank you, Your Honor. We have 11 members in the room, 11 members in Civic Clerk, and one member who is uh, attempting to join us uh, via, via internet. Okay, very good. So Alder Galvin is excused for the time being, understanding he's still going to be trying to hop on at a later point in the meeting. Uh, so with that, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for our invocation. So for our invocation, we are lucky to be joined um, by a guest from the community, and this is Abby Ledvina, who is the Executive Director of the Mothi Center for Faith, Spirituality, and Social Justice at UWGB. For 61 years, the Mothi Center for Faith, Spirituality, and Social Justice, previously called the Ecumenical Center, has offered spiritual su support to students and opportunities to build a faith-filled community throughout the Green Bay area. Uh, Abby has been associated with the center since 2011. As a human biology major, she served as the Mothi Center as a student intern, and now she is the executive director, leading her board of directors in a major effort to refresh, revitalize, and rebrand the Mothi Center. So Abby will now offer an invocation. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you, Mayor. Um, thank you all for allowing me to come here. Um, I'm uh, happy to share if many of you knew Father Mothy, and if you didn't know Father Mothy, um, he was a little bit of a maverick at this time. Um, but he did write a book, and from his book, um, I grabbed a few quotes, so I wanted to kind of read that for tonight and lead you into prayer. So. I'd hope, to, I'd hope my life to be a lover's dream. When we fall in love with someone or something, we're always in love. And when we give of ourselves in service to love, we are no longer blind or afraid. We can see. The dream becomes real, and our love is reflected through our deeds. Love is not only a noun, but also a verb. Love is all the actions we take every day to better the lot of others, heal the wounded, soothe those who are hurting, connect the divided, embrace the outcast and rejected. Love isn't only about us feeling good about ourselves. Love is about making sure all the others know they too are loved. There's nothing more or nothing less we need but to be approved and unconditionally loved by another human being. It is through this love, through each other, that we see divine grace in action and feel God's love on us. I pray that your deliberations today on behalf of the people of Green Bay be based on unconditional love, especially for those who are wounded, outcast, and rejected, so that they might feel through you God's love for them. Thank you. Thanks so much. Now we are on to approval of the minutes. To approve. Motion to approve made by Alder Scano. Second. Seconded by Alder Eck. Any changes? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. Ayes have it. On to approval of the agenda. So moved. Approval made by a motion to approve made by Alder Scano, seconded by Alder Weary. Changes here? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. And the agenda has been approved. I'll make it quick for my report, um, but first and foremost, um, wanted to thank Clerk Jeffries, her entire team in the clerk's office, city staff, volunteers, voters, anyone and everyone who had any uh, part to play in the election on Tuesday. We also had a couple alders who were helping out, Alder Eck and Alder Stoyer, so really appreciate your service to the city on, on Tuesday as well. Um, but it was a, a big undertaking, you know, incredible turnout, especially for an off-year election. A lot of new registrations, uh, a bunch of new ballots having to be printed because of that turnout all across the city. So just want to recognize our, our voters and poll workers, and like I said, everybody who, who played a role, um, first and foremost, as I said, with our, our clerk Jeffries and, and her staff. So if we could uh, recognize that, I'd appreciate it. Um, also, just uh, wanted to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. We're not going to be getting back together before we all celebrate with, uh, with friends and family, so want to extend happy Thanksgiving wishes to our council and, and the community. We also have 
a ton of different events going on, holiday related, uh, near the end of the month. Um, there's a, a lighting on Broadway. We've got the peace tree at the courthouse. We've got the Christmas parade. Um, I'm uh, imagining one of our alders might be uh, might be hanging around for that one. So, uh, would of course encourage all of our community to uh, to attend these these great events that are that are coming up here in the next couple weeks. And as I said, happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Um, obviously, we got a budget to deal with tonight. So, um, really looking forward to a robust discussion. We had a good one at our uh, at our committee meeting last week. Um, so, looking forward to many good ideas coming forth from the council and and final approval ultimately later this evening. Um, so, with that. We don't have announcements on here, but uh, I would entertain any if anyone has any. Alder Eck. Um, well, I just want to let everybody know that the market on military, the winter market on military is um, has, is underway and it's on the November 19th is the next one from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the old office depot in the Green Bay Plaza. Very good, thank you. I'm running the bouncy houses. Wow, great. Alder Campbell. As maybe the hunter in the group here, I want to just uh, wish everyone good, good luck and a safe hunting season. Uh, remember all the rules and why we get to do it and enjoy the hunt. Okay. Hey, don't don't shoot any bears. That's yeah, over. There's a lot of them. Right. Are there a lot of bears? <laughs> any other announcements? Yeah, because I let them all go. All right. <laughs> Seeing none, we'll move forward to the public hearing aspect of our council meeting um, and just would encourage everyone from the the public who has anything to say on the on the budget to speak now we do have the opportunity to, to obviously open the floor if alders are interested but I think it would be it'd be great if if everyone who wants to talk on the budget would talk at this point um, so is there anyone from the public who would like to speak to the budget and you can just state your name and address for the council and then uh, we typically allow for about three minutes of public input uh, so with that, go ahead, sir. My name is William Acker. I live at 3217 Nicolay Drive. Uh, I've gone through the uh, tax increase numbers for my property, and it looks like my property would be uh, seeing a tax increase of 13.4%, which to me seems to be, you know, a very large increase. But I'm also thinking about all the other people in Green Bay, <clears throat> the lower income people and so forth that can't afford those kinds of increases. And so I'm asking our aldermen tonight to <clears throat> reconsider the budget in hopes of trying to bring that number down uh, to a more reasonable number. Do understand that we got labor rates going up, benefits, uh, all the uh, fuel prices and all this and so I can understand that your budget definitely would have to go up this year in comparison to last year but I'm just asking that you consider uh, reducing it uh, below what you're currently looking at so thank you. Thank you sir. Any questions for our guests? Hang on. All right. Mark Berglund. I live at 806 North Broadway, Green Bay, Wisconsin. I'd like to make a few comments on the budget proposal. I have read and studied this budget, listened to comments, attended committee meetings discussing this. I'm a small business owner for over 25 years, so I understand budgets. There have been many things discussed. What to cut, what to keep, what to increase. All hard decisions only so much funds and where to allocate those funds to make a maximum impact. As I understand, some of the significant increases this year are seven additional firefighter positions and potentially a wage increase of between 20 and 30% for seasonal employees. In this proposed budget is a cost of living increase of 3% for all city employees. This wage adjustment does not fund until October 1st of 2023. Therefore, it doesn't have much budget impact for another 10 months, in my opinion. The other side of that is it also doesn't provide any additional wage relief for city employees for another 10 months at a time when the cost of living is 8% or more. We've all heard about the struggling families trying to make ends meet the real estate tax assessment, assessment that may raise our taxes, 
the cost of food going up, the cost of fuel going up, almost everything we need to sustain our families going up. I'm an hourly paid, non-exempt City of Green Bay employee for the Park and Forestry Department. We city employees are not immune to these increased expenses. So a 3% cost of living adjustment that doesn't fund for another 10 months doesn't do us very much when in my research, most all surrounding communities, all smaller than this city, are giving them their employees a cost of living wage adjustment of 5% or more. Most of us non-exempt city employees are also eligible for a 1% performance wage increase. Add that to our 3% cost of living and we are still behind most other surrounding communities. The city of Green Bay has more garbage to collect, more streets to repair, more streets to plow, more parks to maintain, more tr trees to prune or remove and replace. Yet we are all behind these other communities and wages which is it evident with the lack of job applicants when we have job openings. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy working for the city of Green Bay. I love my job and I am very proud of our park system. I just feel that the city could do a little better for all of its hardworking, non-exempt employees. Thank you for your time. Thanks for your comments, sir. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Any other members of the public like to speak? Tony Tyson, 931 South Baird Street, Green Bay. Mr. Mayor, honorable city council members. From 1984 to 2012, I did what you're doing tonight. Representing the district, uh, Alderman Bill Galvin is my alderman to, uh, now. So, um, when you talk, you're supposed to tell them what you're going to tell them, then tell them, and then tell them what you told them. So I'm saying if I, I voted for a lot of budgets, and I voted against a lot of budgets. I don't know as much as you folks know about this budget, but I think I know as much as the average person walking down the street. If I was sitting here tonight, this is one of the budgets I'd be voting against. Now, a lot of these meetings I went through, you get, if it's a bad budget, you get a lot of motions and a lot of them fail. I recall one year, late 80s, early 90s, Sam Hallowen had a budget that um, most of the older people didn't like. Back then we had 23 on the council. You knew who the conservatives were, you knew who the liberals were, you knew who the moderates were. That year, the conservatives and the moderates didn't like the budget. We couldn't agree on what to cut out. Somebody made a motion to refer it back to Mayor Hallowen to cut X dollars out of it. So he was upset, he said, that's your job. You cut out what you want out, I gave you my budget. Well, I say BS. You're the board of directors. I'm the taxpayer. I don't have to tell you what I want out of the budget. I have the liberty of saying I don't like it. Your job is to find out what you can cut. So it was referred back to Mary Hallowen. He cut a bunch of stuff out of it. It came back to the council. The council put a few things back in. They didn't like him taken out. But the net result was a substantial cut. So my suggestion is, if you can't agree on what to cut, you give it to the mayor, he's got the administration, you're the board of directors, I'm the taxpayer, there's not that many people here. I know when I sat there for 28 years, I thought someday I might be on the other side of the fence. Well, budgets, I guess, I, this is the first one in 10 years I'm gonna say, I, I gotta say something. If you had a referendum on this budget, you'd have tens of thousands of people against it. So I'm just gonna say, for all those people back home that don't like going to meetings, it's not just me, there's a lot of people don't like this budget. There's a lot of people that go to the gas station that used to fill up their tank, that now put in a quarter tank, because that's all they can afford because they gotta go to the grocery store. So I never believed 
when aldermen voted for a budget and told their constituents this is a bare bones budget. I'm a very frugal person. I know there's always stuff you can cut out. There's always stuff you can cut out. <coughs> so I'm asking you as a taxpayer, I'm telling you as a taxpayer, I don't like what's the, the amount of the budget. I think it's got to be cut. So as alderman here, you can vote it down. Then the mayor can figure out what he's going to do with it. You can make motions all night, try to cut it. It's up to you. But there's a lot of people. Another thing I'm going to mention, I was on the city council for 28 years. Guy Zim was on the city council for over 30 years. Roger Vanderlees was on the council for about 20 years. Isn't it interesting that the people that <coughs> voted against the budget the most got reelected the most? So if you're politically on the fence and you're not sure if voting against this budget is going to hurt you or not, it's not going to hurt you. It's not going to hurt you if that's your deciding factor. People that, people that are the most frugal get reelected the most. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any questions? All right. Any other folks who'd like to speak to the budget? Yes. To de debate Bar our former alders. <laughs> Barbara Dorf. 3375 Pebble Beach Court, Green Bay, Wisconsin. So I have made some um, very positive comments about the budget at the town hall. And I sat in um, for the five plus hours last week as I watched the Personnel and Finance Committee look at every, every single, it seemed, line item of the budget. Um, I think this is a very responsible budget. I am praying that there are enough people in the room tonight alders in the room tonight to help this city move forward with a responsible budget. At this time, it's a budget in which we can make up for some of the mistakes that were made in the past. Years ago, while I was still on council, when we took one-time money and we used it to balance the budget and we found ourselves in a deep hole. This is our opportunity to be able to try to catch up, to be able to get some things out of bonding where they don't belong, and to get them back into this general budget where they do belong. The opportunity we have is even better because the county has already said that they're going to go down. I believe it was like $40 per 100000 I, I could be wrong, but they're going to go down. The school district, even with their referendum passing, is going to go down. If city council votes for a budget and if this budget comes across now, things will balance out between county and city and schools. This is the year to do that. This is the chance that we have. The, the um, expenditure restraint program was 8%. We were able to go up. I think we kind of reached the top of that. Pretty sure I saw that last week. Um, and we are able to bring our mill rate down because of the reassessment. So I highly encourage you to vote on this, to consider the budget, to make some cuts if you feel you need to. As chair of finance for four years, I'm saying that this was, is a very good budget. And I will try to stay here till the end to see this through with you all tonight. Thank you. Thanks for your testimony. Any questions? Any other members of the public? Fluffy Arts, 1207 Mojave Tape Trail, Green Bay. First of all, I want to say when Sam Hallowin was mayor, he had a lot more money to deal with. Heck, I was just talking to the Muni Court judge saying, hey, do you like your shower there? He said, yes, when uh, Mr. Hansen showed me, he said, I never used that. That building was built with a shower in it for Mr. Warpinski because he would run every day at noon and wanted to shower after he was done. So we built a building with a shower in it. We had a lot more money then for one person to use a shower. You've been balancing your budget off of the employees' backs for years. We used to get our raises in January. And then that year, um, when it started back, I don't know if it was 16 or 2015, they started balancing the budget off of the employees' backs and continue to do that. People don't work for free. 
people buy toilet paper, and that raises, do you call Georgia Pacific and say, golly gee, I'm not going to buy toilet paper anymore. No, we buy it and nobody says anything. So um, the employees are important. The city has good employees here. I hope you think about that, um, and I appreciate you listening. Thank you. Okay. Any questions? Thank you, ma'am. Any others? All right. That's a public hearing. Yeah, so at this point, we will move along to the report of the Joint Finance and Personnel Committee, meeting from November 3rd, 2022. And as I have done in the past uh, couple years, we will deal with this like a normal report. So what I'm asking uh, now is a motion. Um, Approve. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stevens. And here I'm going to pause for a very long time and make sure that we have every item um, that everybody would like to be like to hold separately. So we will do that now. Shout them out. I'll make a motion to separate the budget items. Well, they're already separated. Right, but rather than adopting it like the full report, just to take them up one at a time, so that. Because okay. I think there's a lot of people that are maybe not prepared for taking them all up at once. Okay. Like I said, we have done this the past three years. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we, so is that a, we've got a motion and a second to adopt the I report. I have my items written down. Mm -hmm. But I don't, especially for folks that are newer, I don't, are you prepared to pull all the items that you need to pull? Be here a bit longer. Um, we can What's certainly that? do that. I'm agreeing with you. I think the motion yeah. is taken those separate. Yeah. Second, yeah. Awesome. So we got a motion by Alder Johnson, uh, seconded by Alder Eck, to take up these items separately. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. So we're on item one, receiving place on file the request for 2023 new positions and reclassifications. Uh, recommendation to discuss during the individual department's 2023 budget approval. One, two, approve. Motion to approve made by Alder Johnson, seconded by Alder Stevens. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Item two, to receive in place on file a request to reclassify the fire administrative assistant to fire finance services administrator not included in the 23 budget. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Motion by Alder Johnson, seconded by Alder Stevens. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it on item three. Approve the Common Council budget. Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Alder Johnson, seconded by Alder Stevens. Discussion? In favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The budget's approved for Common Council. Item four, to approve the Mayor's Office budget. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve by Alder Johnson, seconded by Alder Scannell. Any discussion? In favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Ayes have it. Item five, to reduce postage by $5,000 and approve the administrative services budget as amended. Motion to approve. Motion to approve made by Alder Johnson, seconded by Alder Stevens. Discussion, uh, Alder Burnett. Yes, uh, thank you, Mayor. This was my idea. I originally proposed $10,000 that committee. The committee you know, made a motion to go down to 5,000. One thing that I'm looking at is it's mostly election related, but not entirely all election related. There's a postage increase over last year. I heard, from what I understand, there are three postage increases that occurred last calendar year. Um, I guess this question might be for Director Ellen Becker or Clerk Jeffries. I noticed the 2023 budget for elections is 218,000, give or take, and I know that's substantially different than the current year because we have two less elections, two less elections in 2023. But if you look at 2021, you know, it's, it's um, election budget is 178000 If you go to 2019, $190,000. So we've gone from one ninety in an off presidential or congressional election from one ninety one hundred ninety thousand in 2019 to one seventy eight and now two eighteen. Can you explain that? Is that mostly postage increase or is there anything else election related that is 
leading to that significant increase. Put it Director Allenbecker first and then uh, Clerk Jeffries if necessary. Um, I can look up the information. I believe year over year there is an increase in some wages, um, but I really would prefer to Mr. defer Jeffries? to the clerk. She have put the budget together. Yes, that increase is not due to postage, but rather due to an increase in wages for poll workers, which which I um, put in place for the August and um, November elections of this year. Alderman, so. Uh, $178,000 in 2021 to 218000 so that's $40,000 difference. Is that all going to a wage increase? For poll workers, yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Oh, and I may, let me just add one more thing. Um, we did have, <clears throat> as everyone knows, there has been um, some paper shortages, and so paper was substantially more expensive this year. I did actually ask for a budget amendment in part because of paper, and so part of my increase in budget is also due to paper. Okay. Thank you, Clerk. You're welcome. Alder Burnett, anything no, further? No. Any other comments on this item? Seeing none, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. And that report has been approved, or item has been approved. On to item six, to approve the information technology and equipment replacement budget. Motion to approve made by Alder Stevens, seconded by Alder Johnson. Discussion here. Seeing none, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Item six has been approved. On to item seven, to approve the law budget. Motion to approve. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell. Seconded by Alder Stevens. Discussion here. Alder Johnson, then Alder Burnett. Thank you, Mayor. I'm going to make a motion here. We uh, we have some one-time uh, legal expenses that are in here, and hopefully everyone on council by this time knows what those are for, and that's what the closed session language, of course, is on there for. Uh, but I'm going. It's uh, it's an amount one hundred and forty-three thousand four hundred and seventy-nine dollars. I'm going to make a motion. Uh, and, and Director Allen Becker, I'm looking at you for which accounts this will impact, uh, but to fund that through the general fund balance. Okay. So, so it would reduce the levy and therefore the mill rate for that 143, 479. And uh, in, in, in for those you know not familiar, I had uh, Director Allen Becker uh, kind of provide for me what our policy was on the general fund balance, as well as. I mean, we're, we're, we're beyond the cushion uh, that we need, and the general fund balance is specifically designed to obviously buffer us from uh, unique circumstances, uh, shortfalls, uh, one-time increases. I'll be perfectly transparent with you. I have some things on my list, and I'm sure you do too, uh, that I am going to suggest ARPA for, uh, but this particular one, I, I am, my motion is to use the general fund balance. I second. Seconded by Alder Eck. Discussion on that? Motion. Seeing none. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it, and that motion has been approved. Still have the underlying motion. Any further discussion on law? Yeah. Uh, Alder Burnett. Yeah. Um, I tried this at the committee, and I believe uh, I know it failed. So I'd like to make a motion to not reclassify the two legal legal assistant positions from a 0 0.94 to a 1 FTE and a 0.75 FTE to a 1 FTE for a budget savings of $24,370. Okay, we have a motion by Alder Burnett, as stated, seconded by Alder Weary. Discussion on that motion? I, I do. Yeah. Alder Burnett, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, uh, thank you. As we know, we are significantly increasing legal expenses or legal dollar budgets for our legal budget for good reason obviously we recently added additional attorneys in that office and from what I understand they're getting caught up as well as they can um, I think if we're going to reduce this budget in a way that is acceptable to most taxpayers we have to make some <coughs> cuts somewhere and there are going to be tough cuts that we're going to need to consider and this 
you may consider that a tough cut or one that maybe isn't as tough. Um, but we can definitely increase staffing in many of our departments. There are a lot of departments that need more help, but we can't fund everything at 100%. We can increase staff in every department. So this is a modest increase in FTE status. And I think that uh, as a as former Alderman Tyson said, as a board of directors, this is something that we can make as as a body and just say, it's $24,000, it's a rather s significant savings and we just need to do it. So that's my motion and my reasoning. Thanks, Alder. Uh, Attorney Bungert? Yes. So just to put a little context um, into what the this increase would do, um, <coughs> essentially it's adding an additional 12 hours of support staff per week. Um, that's functionally exactly what it would be doing, it would be adding 10 hours to one legal assistant and a little over two hours to another legal assistant. So, um, and that request is coming um, from a, a, a couple different perspectives or different points, um, basically with the goal of maximizing capacity and efficiency with the staffing that we currently have. Um, we have added a litigation attorney, that's the only attorney that's been added um, in the last several years. Um, and this ask for this additional 12 hours of support staff is simply just due to the increases in workloads as well as anticipating fully expanding and deploying our litigation and attorney role um, and additional litigation actions in the next year. Um, since I took over um, as uh, appointed uh, CA in February, um, we added on our, we replaced our, our deputy city attorney and then added on a legislative attorney as we did a internal transfer for our litigation position. But we haven't been fully functioning and fully staffed until about June. So we haven't been able to really deploy our litigation attorney as fully um, as we've been hoping to. Um, but with that, we know that we're gonna need significant and crucial clerical support in order to be able to fully maximize the cost savings that um, was presented uh, to council and to the city as far as what our litigation attorney would be able to do from an in-house position. Um, just a few numbers that I did share with the council and the support uh, materials that I had emailed all of you. Um, our records requests continue to increase year after year. There's a trending um, upward uh, uh, trajectory, which we don't anticipate going away simply because the 2020 election is, is finally quieting down. Um, we are uh, entering into a mayoral election in the spring. Um, we're seeing a, a significant increase in records requests with respect to the election we just had a couple days ago. Um, in addition, um, we are receiving more and more requests for additional support and review of police department requests. Um, our records requests just over the just over the last year have increased by a hundred, and we only have one support staff that uh, handles that primarily, along with one city attorney. Um, in addition, our number of pretrials has increased by 250 pretrials this year alone, um, and that is also um, supported by one. Um, three-quarter time legal assistant. Um, and so by increasing her hours to an, uh, a 40-hour workload, um, that will uh, greatly impact efficiency and being able to be prepared for those uh, for those pretrials and trials that are being scheduled and assisting our uh, municipal prosecutor attorney. Uh, beyond this, these tasks, um, we are also, like I said, we are expecting to fully deploy and maximize our litigation attorney to pursue and defend actions such as um, actions against nuisance properties and drug houses and the like. That takes a lot of, of dedicated work and, again, a lot of clerical support in getting title searches and other research materials that are necessary in order to file those actions and pursue those actions to make our community safer. Uh, subrogation actions and trying to recoup um, monies that the city is out on, on claims and costs that are um, being uh, levied against the city. Uh, collections actions to recoup outstanding debt owed to the city. Again, that takes a lot of clerical support in researching um, doing title searches and things of that nature. Uh, excessive assessment actions and defending uh, those um, so that we maintain our uh, tax revenue that we need in order to fund um, all of the city services that we provide, um, as well as employment related actions. So these are all matters that would have previously required outside counsel and will obviously therefore be a cost savings to the city. But most importantly, um, as I said, in context with our budget ask, it's, it's additional crucial clerical support that 
is simply 12 hours um, across two, pos uh, two positions. Um, I, I do understand um, Alder Brunette said that we are, we are adding a significant amount to our legal expenses budget. Um, however, those two items really should not be blended together under one umbrella. Um, our legal expenses um, do not cover the cost of our staff and our personnel and the bodies that we have here doing the work. The legal expenses are covering costs for um, additional uh, outsourcing contracts that have nothing to do with our day-to-day -day operations. Those are things that are specific, specified projects that are anticipated and are therefore being put into our operating budget because we know that they are coming forward next year um, versus uh, coming to you all with a contingency request um, as, as has been done in years past. So even though we are getting a bump in our legal expenses, that is not going to help uh, us with the workload that we have Monday through Friday every day of the year. Thanks, Attorney. Any additional comments or questions for Attorney Bungert or on the motion? Alder Scannell. Uh, yes, uh, when we're talking tough cuts, I'm really hesitant to make cuts that affect staff salaries and staff's pay. I think that's something I'm not sure I can get on. If anything, I'd like to see what more we can do to uh, increase our wages or help uh, improve the wages of our staff. Um, and I think, again, we have to be careful in being penny wise and pound foolish. If we're cutting money up front, that down the road is going to cost us more expenses, we're not really saving. We're not really doing much here. So um, I appreciate all the efforts to try and make the budget better, but um, I, I can't support doing it on the backs of our employees. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Burnett for a second yeah, time. Yeah, thank, uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, Alder Scandal, I appreciate those comments. I just want to clarify, we're not, the motion isn't to reduce anyone's pay or pay rate. It's simply they're, they're asking for additional staff okay. hours. So, yeah, to, so that this, these positions, if the pay increase still is in effect of 3% in October, they'll still get that. We're just not reclass, we're not adding additional staff hours. That's all. So you might know that. I just, the way you made it sound like I was cutting salaries, which was all this scandal for a second time. Yep. Uh, the point I was making is if, if, if from what I understand that these additional hours will save staff time and money so that if we take it now, we're going to end up, staff is going to end up working more, costing more. We're not, all we're doing is saving face maybe a little bit at budget time, but we're not really being fiscally responsible. So thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Eck. Um, I'm not sure how applicable it is but in this particular spot, but I want to ask about um, the additional, and I know the whole closed session, so I'm not asking to go into closed session for that particular, but how long, I know that that's um, putting a lot on our legal department. When does that end? Does anybody know, have a, like a deadline on that or an end date? I know it's hard to say that. Right. So those are two, um, for two specific matters that are, are coming up um, net, that we're anticipating will be happening next year. Um, and so that's why um, in discussions with the finance department, we thought it was most um, appropriate to put that into our operating budget as we were fairly certain that, that those expenditures were coming. Um, and so it, it was more fiscally responsible to, to put it into the operating budget versus um, engaging in those in those actions um, and matters and then trying to ask for contingency on the back end to pay for the legal bo bills and expenses. So there is no specific deadline. It's just a one-time expenditure that will likely be coming due um, next year in 2023. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other comments? Alder Hutchison and Alder Grant. Um, question for the attorney. Well, there. So if we do not approve these extra hours, what will happen to that work? Um, will it cost the city money? Will we have to farm this out? What exactly will happen? Potentially. Um, there could be a couple different... Um, 
uh, repercussions essentially. Um, we're not gonna be able to keep up with the workload um, as, as fastly and as efficiently as I would like. Um, so responses to records requests will take longer. Review of records requests will take longer. Review of records requests for the, for the police department will take longer. Um, as the, the person that's handling that is not in the office as much as I'm requesting um, her to be. Um, and uh, as well as our ability to pick and choose what actions, uh, for example, against nuisance properties um, and drug houses um, or collections actions, we're gonna be a little bit more selective as far as which ones we can take on because we're gonna have less clerical support in order to be able to support those types of actions. And possibly if they are, um, severe or significant, um, we'll, we'll have to hire outside counsel to handle those because we won't have the staffing and the support staff um, in-house to be able to um, appropriately handle those matters. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Alder. Alder Grant. Oops, sorry. Um, roughly what percentage would you say of open records requests are election related that we get? Um, I'm not sure if I have a percentage. I think it's a smaller chunk as far as just general records requests. <coughs> Um, we get a number of records requests for, for personnel files, for um, information about employees, um, records requests about um, accidents and things like that. So our elections records request in the past year, um, the chunk of that has been significant, um, but it's definitely not the majority. Okay, I just noticed in one of the reports that you sent us, it mm -hmm. seems like the month following an election, the requests shoot up quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And I know it's been talked about that we have one election in 2023, so I didn't know if we would see a decrease in that. And I do, you know, I have a hard time, and I've said this before with other matters, I feel like we're putting a Band-Aid on a problem and we're not looking at the actual problem. I think things possibly occurred that were avoidable. So are we really servicing our taxpayers by putting a Band-Aid on it instead of fixing the problem itself? So I just wanted to know if my observations were accurate as far as what I was seeing on the report. There was definitely a bump in election-related requests following the 2020 election, um, but if you look for a few, um, that trend chart that I had sent um, to all the alders, um, even uh, po uh, police uh, uh, record requests that has been steadily going up year after year after year, um, and that reviews law department time, staff, clerical staff time to review, to prepare, to review the notices, to um, serve the notices and the subpoenas um, and and uh, coordinate review of those of those records with the appropriate personnel that are being noticed so those numbers are going up and prior to um, 2020 and all the election related requests that came from that our numbers were, were steadily going up I think when I started um, with the department I think we were averaging around 70 requests 65 requests and just within two years that went up to over to about a hundred um, and that was way before um, uh, 2020 just in trends generally in government with open government and transparency laws and sh sunshine laws um, this is just an anticipated trend that records requests are going to continue going up and up regardless of, of elections that are happening okay, okay. thank you mm -hmm. thank you Alder Johnson yeah thank you mayor you know the last I mean I've been in council for a little more than four years now and if there's one a number of trends I've identified and one of them is uh, inquiries from this body about why it takes so long to get certain things back from our law department um, and so that is not a critique of the law department that's a recognition that the workload is uh, perhaps more than than what is is uh, they're capable of handling and so um, I, I appreciate the discussion that's going on around the open records requests I think though the email that attorney Bungert sent to us identified that records request was a part of what the workload is, reality is we are a growing city. Um, growing cities come with growing needs. Uh, so the number of legal requests we've had to handle in the past are uh, perhaps slightly more. And so to take a, a slight increase in the legal staffing seems to be reasonable to me, especially when you look at things, you know, like raise and repair orders uh, that my district happens to see a fair amount of. Um, I, I know there are sometimes those, those inspection issues that we work through that get stalled or delayed because there's not enough bandwidth, and so uh, I want to also be sensitive to what uh, Alder Burnett is proposing, um, 
and recognize that, yeah, we're going to have to make some decisions here today. So I'm going to offer up an amendment that, that both acknowledges what Alder Burnett wants to achieve, but also signals to our staff that we support you and help is on the way. Uh, and, and so I'm going to amend, uh, make a motion to amend Alder Burnett's um, motion to delay the hiring six months uh, to July 1st, which if the math is correct on Alder Burnett's calculation was a $24,000 savings would result in 12000 uh, so I think it kind of achieves both of our needs in that regard. So that's my motion. Second. Alder uh, Johnson makes a motion seconded by Alder Scannell uh, to delay the hiring until which in, month? Uh, July 1st. And Mayor, if I could just add to that, part of the yeah. reason why I am, am opting for an amendment to delay the hiring is recognizing that, again, a, a, a portion of that need is records requests, um, but state law does not define when a records request needs to be fulfilled, it's just as soon as practicable, right? So if, if by, by doing a delay, we can say, you know what, we'll still continue to fill those as soon as practicable, but we're also gonna have that additional bandwidth to address some of those other imminent needs that we do have in our community. Okay, thank you, Alder. Uh, on the amendment, Alder Stoyer? Well, I'm gonna speak on something else. But... Okay, we can come back to you. I'll come back. Okay, Alder Burnett? On the amendment yeah thank you mayor i i'm agreeable to that i think sometimes we need to compromise and at the end of the day at the end of the budget hearing uh if there's uh, a need for us to reduce the taxes more than what we are at at the moment then we can revisit this so i support the the motion thank you thanks Alder. any other comments on the amendment yeah Alder, Alder Star. thank you your honor um I agree with that as well. You know, we're going to have to compromise a little bit. I think one of the challenges as an alder, all of us have, is that we're not privy to the everyday activities, you know, here at City Hall. We talk to department heads, we talk to other folks, we try to get the best information we can. Uh, we're hearing from the taxpayers that, hey, we got to do some cuts here somehow. But, you know, just to cut, just for the sake of cutting, you know, it's not always the best thing. You know, we have to be. Like you said, we have to look to the future. You know, so if we make this cut, how is it going to affect us down the road? If we can delay a few things, I, I could see that happening. But you know, just you know, just so you're aware, and a lot of the citizens are aware that you know we take this seriously. You know, we're you know we want to listen to them, but we don't want to just cut for the sake of cutting. But I think we will have to make some adjustments here and there. So that's my comment. All right, thank, thank you, Alder. Any others? All right, we have an amendment and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. nay. The ayes have it. That amendment succeeds. Entertain a motion to approve as amended. Motion to approve as amended. Second. Made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stoyer. Comments on that? Seeing none. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. And that item is approved. Can I get a point of order real quick? Yeah, Alder Burnett. Yeah, I don't know if this is appropriate, but I just want to alert the council to it. Um, Clerk Jeffries had just sent us uh, a couple emails within the last five minutes or so and it's comments from the public and there were three specific comments and all three were against the budget and, and they were all submitted before the time we met. So I just want you to be aware of that, you know, because when the public responds or sends emails through our system, Hopefully we receive those. So Clerk Jeffries, are there, I don't know if this is appropriate, but are there any more public comments that you'll be sending us? Clerk Jeffries? Yes, I apologize for that delay. Um, we have a lot of things to do with the election. So, plus we have to audit um, five wards. So that's what I was working on today. And I just saw those. I saw a few that I had gotten before, like yesterday. So I just saw those. Um, looking in my email, I don't see any, uh, any additional ones that are lurking out there okay that's fine it, I, I know you've been busy i just i didn't want to come off negative i just wanted to alert the council that there were comments that were submitted thank you I appreciate that thank you thanks alder yep all right so now we're on to item eight which is to eliminate line item number five zero zero three seasonal salaries of four thousand dollars to zero and eliminate line item number five zero five zero one overtime of five hundred dollars to zero to approve the municipal court budget uh, as amended. And before we um, go to that item, we do have Judge Jago who is joining us. So we are uh, pleased to have you in the chambers. Um, so if you just wanted to give some sort of overall comments on your budget and maybe touch on these particular items, 
um, we would certainly <coughs> appreciate that. Sure. Um, just overall, uh, I don't think this budget has changed a whole lot uh, throughout the years. Uh, from what I understand, I obviously just took office uh, in April. Uh, with regards to the seasonal salaries, that $4,000 is really just kind of a contingency um, in the event that I get sick or I'm unavailable. Uh, we have to pay a reserve judge at that point to come in and conduct court. Um, <clears throat> Something like me being unavailable well in advance, a couple months in advance, um, knowing that, you know, we can switch court dates, uh, ask the uh, officers not to write citations, uh, or not, not to not write citations, but to not issue court dates uh, on, on those dates. But uh, if I get the flu, if I get, um, you know, sick for a week or something, we'll need to pay a reserve judge at a rate of $225 an hour or a day. Um, and so that's where that money comes from. Is $4,000 necessary? Uh, probably not. That's about 17 days. I don't think I've ever been sick or, or really unavailable that many work days in my life. But um, I would think that maybe, you know, $2,200, $2,250 uh, there would probably be appro an appropriate amount. That accounts for 10 days of a reserve judge um, coming in. Uh, so uh, I think eliminating it altogether would be a poor choice. Uh, um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know how much experience you guys all have with attorneys, but they don't usually do things for free. Um, and so uh, getting a reserve judge to come in at no cost uh, would be difficult. With regards to the overtime, uh, I don't really think that we have any overtime expenses, and I don't think we have in a while. Um, I was talking to my <clears throat> our court administrator who's here today um, just about that line item, and he indicated that was from years ago. They would occasionally have to go into the actual courthouse on a weekend uh, and do some work, but that hasn't happened in quite some time. Um, I know that uh, we don't really just have a, a lot of necessity for overtime. So much of what can be done, payments, um, uh, entering not guilty pleas, things like that can be done on the website. Um, and so it's pretty automated. Additionally, um, we're pretty flexible. If you leave, a, if, somewhere, if, a or if someone were to leave a message uh, over the weekend saying, hey, I have a Monday court date and I need it moved, um, you know, and just here's why, um, we're pretty flexible with that. So there's really no need for someone to be there on the weekend or after hours. So I think, you know, if, if you're looking to cut something that we, you know, really that, that would be fine. Um, that's kind of a relic from an older time, but just that, that seasonal salary, um, I, I think that that, uh, we do need something there. Uh, and so I think I would just indicate, you know, around $2,250, again, that accounts for 10 days of a reserve judge. Um, I think that would probably be appropriate. Okay, great, thanks so much for those comments. And I should say, you know, Director Allenbecker would probably know this much better than me, but um, Neil and, and other staff have been pretty good about really slimming, <coughs> slimming things down over at municipal court and have gone down like a position and a half or maybe more over the last few years. So I wanna recognize the court for, for all of that too. They do um, great work. Absolutely. Uh, comments on? Uh, I just make a motion to approve to put a motion on the floor. Say that again, Alder Johnson? Just a motion to approve, so at least we have a motion on the floor. Yeah. yeah. Motion to approve by Alder Johnson, seconded by Alder Scannell. Comments um, on the judge's comments or potentially an amendment? Alder Burnett. Yeah, thank, thank you, Judge. Thank you for uh, being here. Mm -hmm. I actually made this motion at the, the committee just because it seemed out of out of line with what we had been. So I'm just so grateful you're here to explain it. I would make a motion to uh, eliminate, well, to reduce the line item so that it's at 2250 Is that what you said, Judge? For seasonal salaries? Seasonal okay. salaries, and then eliminate overtime from 500 to zero. Second. Okay. Um, motion to amend was made by Alder Brunette, seconded by Alder Campbell. Discussion on that amendment? I'm sorry, Mayor, what was that amendment? Uh, moving it from $4,000 to $2,000, or 2250 rather. $2,250 and keeping overtime at um, zero. Yes. Just a quick point of order. Uh, Alder Story? When somebody brings something forward, just state what the number is so that everybody can hear what it is, what the number is for the. Yep, I, I did do that. Thank you. But I'll continue well, to do that. 
Thank you. Hey, you bet. Director Alan Becker. I guess just to clarify, coming out of joint finance and personnel, it was down to zero. So if we're taking their recommendation, it would be putting back $2,250 yep, and then right. leaving the um, overtime at zero. Correct. Yeah. <clears throat> Any other comments on that amendment? Alder Scannell? Just one. I'm, I'm not sure how the budget works with the court. Is it, is it possible to draw from other funds, emergency funds or, or contingency? For that kind of thing, or is that do they not cross? No, they they could put in a contingency request. Yeah. So how are we sitting with our, con our contingency? Sounds pretty pretty well off, isn't it? But well, it changes every year. Budget. Well, it changes. Every, that's what I'm right now. I'm trying to it's really not applicable. <clears throat> if he could draw from the but, contingency fund for. But I'll I'll just get all your comment is in the event of a sickness or an absence. You could make that request. Request. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments on the amendment? Seeing none. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. That amendment has been approved. Entertain a motion. Motion to approve is amended. Second. Okay. Motion to approve is amended. Made by Alder Johnson. Seconded by Alder Scannell. <laughs> Discussion. <laughs> Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it, and that motion has been approved as amended. On to item nine to approve the human resources budget. Approve. Motion to approve made by Alder Johnson. Second. Seconded by Alder Hutchison. Discussion? Alder Burnett. I'd like to make a motion to delay hire of the diversity and inclusion coordinator position until July 1st, 2023. All right, is there a second for that? Second. Uh, Alder Burnett makes a motion to delay, delay the hiring of the uh, workplace culture specialist um, from January 1 to uh, um, July 1. That was seconded by Alder Campbell. Discussion on that? Alder Scannell? And then Alder Hutchison? How much does that say? Um, either Director Ellen Becker or... Treasurer Manley. Um, we don't have that available at the moment. We will pull it in a second. All right. Any other comments on on that? Alder Hutchison. That's right. I'd like to uh, ask uh, Chief Falls for his input on this. Chief Falls. Sure. Um, this position has been, I guess, approved in the budget. I think this would be the third year that it's been asked to be a full-time position. Um, so I think when you look at overall, kind of like the increase to the, the budget for this year, um, there's it's not really this position, I think, that's pushing an increase to the budget. Um, I guess I'll just give kind of a perspective to that is um, overall the HR budget's increasing by $76,000 about. $25,000 is coming from salaries, and then $19,000 is coming from um, benefits for the vacant positions. So if you look at this position in general, which has been budgeted the past, you know, two years for a full time or a full year position, it's really probably, I mean, less than $10,000 to so an overall increase to the total budget. So from that perspective, you know, delaying the hire, I mean, it's, it's kind of, we're not delaying a um, increased position or a new position or, you know, adding hours or just kind of delay hiring a position that's been budgeted for a few years. So, I mean, it's ultimately the, the council's decision on that, but I just want to make it known that this position has been budgeted and it's not an added position to the budget. Right. And the, the Equal Rights Commission had a discussion about this as well and, and recommended filling it? That's that correct. Right? And, and we do have uh, commissioners on the line in Zoom who'd, who could speak to that if, if you want to open up the floor. Okay. Is there an interest on their part to speak? Yes, there is. Okay. Motion open the floor. Motion open the floor made by Alder Scannell. Okay. Seconded by Alder Campbell. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. So anyone who has uh, joined us virtually, just state your name and address for the council and begin speaking. Hi, um, this is Tara Ying. Um, my address is 1706 Chateau Drive, Green Bay, Wisconsin, 54304. 
Um, I wanted to make sure that um, with this position, one, that we're not adding an extra load of tasks and, and responsibilities to the staff who are already probably overworked. Two, um, I want to make sure that if this is going to be delayed and brought back up in 2023, I want to make sure that it's not going to be delayed further after that. So if there's anything that we can do to put in place to say that, yes, we are in fact going to pursue hiring a person rather than just delay it to review in July 2023, I'd appreciate that. I think it's really necessary that we put in place this position now so that in the next five to 10 years, as we know, um, we have we have done the work that needs to be done for the, this new diverse population that we're going to have in Green Bay. Um, so that is all that I have to say about that right now. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Yang. Any questions? All right. Thank you for those comments. Uh, Chief Fault. Yeah, and I'd just like to, to add to that as well. To give a little bit of history, uh, we reclassed an HR assistant to be the DEI position. Um, and the thought process behind that was to, we had less administrative work for the HR department, so then we, we noticed that we had more professional work and a need for the DEI space. So um, really, if this position gets delayed, hired, uh, it's really just taking away work like uh, Commissioner Yang talked about. Um, it's adding more work onto our staff. And what this position would help with would be um, training uh, our supervisors on DEI issues, helping recruit um, employees that reflect the community. So delay hiring, while well, it's not the end of the world because we still get the position, it's, it will put a strain on the, uh, the current staff in HR. Okay. Chief, entertain a motion to close the floor. Motion to close the floor. Second. Second. Motion to close the floor made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Johnson. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. If you guys have it, the floor is closed. Alder Burnett. Yeah, th uh, thank you, Mayor, for, for those who were in attendance at the meeting last week, and hopefully if you weren't, you were able to watch the committee meeting because I, I gave my reasoning there, but it, it's my intent to say we're not eliminating the position, we're just simply delaying higher. Tough times require tough decisions, and inflated budgets require <laughs> some cuts, and where are we going to make cuts? Things that are reasonable and what I think hopefully a majority of us can agree to. The reasoning, I, and I'm not gonna rehash it all, but the reasoning I gave <clears throat> at the meeting last week was that Chief Falls, if you watch the meetings of the Equal Rights Commission, he does a remarkable job in, in the, those meetings. He guides the discussion, he provides information to the committee, and I would suggest he just continue to do that. And some of the things that Chief of Operations Folds has been doing that perhaps might be a little different than what he was doing a year ago at this time should be filled in by the Chief of Staff to the Mayor. So between uh, uh, delaying hire of this position until July, shifting some of Chief Folds, and I don't manage staff, so this is an executive decision. The managers and Mayor would have to find a way to make this work, but it's possible and doable. So Chief Falls will kind of continue some of the work when it comes to equality and fairness and inclusion and diversity. Those values should be baked into your HR practices already. And although it's wonderful to have a position dedicated entirely to that cause, I would hope by far, by now, after over 150 years of existence as a city government, that those values are already instilled within our city government. If they're not, I doubt that a position alone can solve that issue. And I just want to go back to when this position was first announced in April, or uh, the 2020 budget would have been November 2019, the first time it was considered. We delayed hire until May at that time. So we added the position, I think it was like a 7-5 vote, but we delayed hire until May during that budget hearing. So we're not doing anything out of the ordinary. So this is a good chance for us to save with benefits, taxes, salary, I don't know, fifty thousand, forty-five, fifty thousand dollars, give or take. So I think it, to me, it's an easy decision. Keep the position, just delay higher until July first. So there, um, just on that note, Director Allen Becker, do you have that number? Yes, um, fifty percent of the DNI coordinator that is built into the twenty twenty-three budget would be forty-five thousand five hundred sixty-four dollars. Okay, thank you. Any other comments, Alder Hutchison? Um, yeah, um, I looked up uh, the job descriptions for all those people uh, the president just discussed, and this position has specific language in it that I don't think the others have. 
where they have to be certified in this work. Um, and for something that's baked into this city, it seems to me this position keeps getting kicked around. I guess if it was baked in, why is it getting so kicked around? I'm just kind of totally disappointed in how this position and how this body views the need to encourage those cultures that aren't typically in being uh, given jobs at the city, why don't we want them given a leverage to come work for the city? Why don't we do that? We just keep pushing it back. I didn't know we, we pushed it back at the beginning too. So I guess that bake is maybe a little bit underdone yet. Maybe we should cook it a little more. That's my point. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Murray. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, <clears throat> I didn't. I was hoping there'd be a spot at the beginning to just talk about the budget in general. We didn't really have that, so I'll kind of intermingle it as we go. Um, this is you my can, um, just on that point. We have a resolution, obviously, to approve the budget, sure. so that'd be appropriate. All at right. That time. Well, I'll mix it in here and there, so it stays sort sort of on point. Um, cooperation and teamwork really should be our goal on these budgets, right? You know, months ahead of time. So. When the public sees us working on the budget, they should know and hopefully know we've only had it for a couple weeks, really, in detail. So, you know, the mayor has the advantage of putting this together very carefully, you know, how they want it. And so it's very difficult to take, you know, and I called this once for, for Mayor Schmidt, to take, a, you know, a turd sandwich and make it into a diamond. It's, it's difficult. And that's our task tonight. Same thing. No offense. Um, but I base that off of, um, I put out comments on, on budgets, and, you know, and I only got 50 back, which is you know, surprising. I didn't get that many back. 35 were opposed and seven were in favor. And so um, every so often I'll just intermingle some of their, their comments that they, they said. Uh, this proposed budget's disappointing after the reval increased our house $76,000. Alder Hutchison. Uh, these are reasons why we should or should not vote for things. Alder Hutchison, you have the floor. Um, uh, point of order, um, what does that have to do with this position? I know there are comments, Alder, but w we're talking about a specific position. If they deal with this position, I'd like to hear them. Yeah, Alder Hutchison makes a good point. We need to keep our comments to the item at hand. Okay, this is about whether or not we should delay the hiring and save that money. Uh, the next person commented, you are our representation with city government. Vote no on this budget. Third person, our property value has increased 326% with the revaluation of property. So there's three no's. I can save the rest for later. But that's kind of a, a smattering so far of what people are feeling on this budget. Because if you look, while the mill rate before was 9.8 on an average home of $136,000, that means your city tax was $1,335. $1, the proposed budget has a mill rate of 7.8. And you could use all kinds of fancy numbers to say that went way down, right? But the average home went to 198,000. Therefore, your city tax is now 1,584 dollars, which is a 209 dollar increase. So right now, as it stands, as presented by, by the mayor, uh, your budget, your your average home would go up over 200 dollars just for your city. And so it's it's also kind of disingenuous to hear what the other people are doing. You know, the, the county is going down, and the school district is going down, therefore we can go up. No, how about we all keep a clean house? So let's keep that in mind as we go forward. There's very few easy cuts or easy votes. Believe me, I've been through them all. It's not easy, okay? Um, and remember that anything in the budget and everything later you can bring back up, especially for the new people. If you miss something and forget about it, it's okay. Bring it up later. We can, we can rehash it. Don't feel like it's water under the bridge. So I'm, I'm for delaying this vote. We're not talking about eliminating it. I'm delaying this position. There's other positions I'm going to ask to to delay as well. And we did one. Uh, we did one earlier. So that's what it's about. It's trying to craft a better budget that, quite frankly, the uh, the public is crying for. Thank you. So are there any other comments on the amendment? Oh, just, uh, Campbell. You know. Owning a business for 27 years, I get tons of people that walk in the door and ask if I'm hiring as much as I'd like to have the extra help. In the state of our economy and seasonal and pinches and supply chain differences, which we're far from out of this hole, I think we're heading in it. So I'm keeping that as my number one thing because we, we're acting like everything's fine here and it's far from fine. I'm making cuts. I love to hire new people. 
if there's a way we can cut this budget, it's not creating new positions, totally delaying them or eliminating some of these positions because till the time is right, I don't see anything to support my vote for hiring any new people. I think it all has to be froze. I'm just giving my comparison to the everyday customer that comes in my store. I don't even need to be the constituents in there. This is, this is all around our community and 100 mile radius. So, I mean, there, there's a lot of people that can't make it. Uh, when I can, I'll shave off a little bit of my labor and give it to them just to make a sale. All right, I, that's to keep my business flow, to keep my customers happy, to keep my business growing. I make cuts. It might only be a few dollars. To me, this is this is just a position. It may only be a few dollars, but it's a lot easier to hire someone when you really, really need them than it is to fire them when they're just sitting around. Okay, and that's my response on the hiring of any new positions or creating more hours. Everyone has to pick up the load and carry it till we're out of this recession heading into a depression. Thank Thanks, you. Alder. Any other comments on the amendment, Alder Eck? Well, I just wanted to clarify um, with um, <laughs> Director Ellen Becker, um, the, the savings, does that include the benefits too or is that just the salary that you gave us the figure for? Director. That would include salaries and benefits. Okay, just wanted to clarify, thank you. Yep, you bet. Other thoughts? Seeing none, all in favor of the amendment will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. We will use the board. I don't believe so. succeeds eight to three entertain a motion second motion to approve as amended made by alder scannell seconded by alder johnson <coughs> discussion on that see none all in favor signify by saying aye aye opposed nay the ayes have it um, and then i think we still have motion to approve the human resources budget that was made by alder johnson initially and we had a second all in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay, the ayes have it. And that item has been approved. Item 10, to move 40% of the administrative clerk to the levy instead of 80% for a savings of $28,531 and approve the community and economic development budget as amended. Approve. Motion to approve made by Alder Johnson, seconded by Alder Stevens. Discussion on that? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay, the ayes have it, and that item has been approved. Item 11, to approve the police department budget. Motion to approve, made by Alder Stevens, seconded by Alder Scannell. Any comments? Alder Burnett. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. I'm gonna propose a motion I made at the committee level. Um, that would be to utilize lost revenue from ARPA in the amount of $263,000 and $55.38 to fund half of the body camera expense. Give that number, <coughs> clerk. Uh, Alder Burnett, could you restate just the number, the dollar amount? Uh, from the committee, I recall it was $263,055.38. All right, Alder Burnett makes a motion to use uh, that amount of ARPA for the, the purchase of or the, the payment of uh, body cameras. Is there a second for that? Seconded by Alder Grant. Uh, and just um, before we go any further, I just was hoping that Director Ellen Becker might be able to tell us what's sitting in um, that lost revenue account, especially in light of uh, the referendum. Yes, an update on the what we call the capital, capital fund or the lost revenue. We started with 10 million. Um, Based on approvals, there is 2,333,835 left in it. 
And again, that is adding back the 1.3 million that is that was approved through the school referendum. Okay, thank you, Director. That, that is what's been approved. Of course, there's referred to staff. Outstanding. Right. Okay, thank you, Director Alder Burnett, and then Alder Eck. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. There was some discussion last week, and uh, Chief Davis kind of made the point, and I think a lot of us agree with this that that at some point we need to put this on our levy entirely. And so last year we used ARPA. When we accepted it a few years ago, we had a very large donation from the Green Bay Packers organization. And so the thought was, let's just rip the Band-Aid off and put everything in levy this year over you know $500,000. And you, know, you can make that argument, of course, but if we have the funds available for ARPA and we can make a, a, you know, a gradual step to that full Band-Aid ripping off part, uh, I'd be willing to do that. One thing for Chief, I, I do have a question. I did talk to Alderman. I think yesterday and there was some confusion going forward after this budget 2023 year do you anticipate an ongoing expense of about five hundred thousand dollars for body cameras and tasers or will that amount go down lower in future years chief davis i don't anticipate that amount ever going down uh, that covers not only the body worn camera and taser equipment but also uh, dashboard cameras and patrol cars and then the really big thing is the storage of all of that video in a way that we can access it easily. Um, you know, this is just the business model for, for tech projects like this. Uh, so it's not just the equipment. It's, I, I do think it's important to remember that it's the yeah. service behind it. Right, exactly. Thank Thanks, you. Chief. That's all. Thanks. All right, thank you. Alder Eck and then Alder Johnson. Okay, so. Um Sorry. Go ahead. Okay. All right. So um, the is that that's five five one four zero equipment replacement that you're you're talking about, right? No. Is that included in that? Or I'm looking trying to find the number on that. Uh, Director Ellen Becker. Yeah. Or Treasurer Manley. Okay. Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> the the expense would be what we would call in our capital fund, which would be the four twenty three fund. And I will find the page for you. <laughs> it would be on page 211 of the budget book. Oh, okay. There is a line called 55121. It's called equipment, rele um, equipment lease, and that is made up two items, $526,000 of the body cams and tasers, and then it also includes money to help pay for the leases of support vehicles. And it's a total of five hundred ninety thousand nine ten seventy five. Thanks, Director. Okay, so what um, I'm wondering, uh, and is it because this is um, safety, there's a different category, not necessarily lost revenue, but we have another category, and I don't remember the amount that's left in that. Mm -hmm. Just wondering if that could be. Um, an idea that we switch it to that and then there's also some other things that were one-time expenses which I lost my list here sorry actually um, for the in this police budget um, and I'm not sure if this is exactly when to bring it up but um, the number five five one four zero police boat motors for a second boat um, Evidence exhaust system and cabinets for the new cabinets, um, crime scene lights, equipment replacement. So this is five five one four zero. So that list, if if that could be, um, we could use ARPA funds towards those because they're more of a one time expense. Director <laughs> Ellen Becker or Treasurer Manley. Yes, those are some items that would be included back into the one hundred one police um, budget. Just make sure we're what page? 98. Page 98. Make sure we're all on the same page before we sh talk about it. Page 98 of the general fund, police fund, there is an line item called 55140. That is equipment replacement. Some of the under items that Alder Eck was just talking about is included in that equipment replacement. There's a total of 430200 in the um, in the budget. Um, she had mentioned some items that were included within that number. So I'm wondering if we, if, and I know there's a motion on the floor, so I'm not quite sure how to handle that. We just wait until we're 
done with the motion or oh. you could amend it. Okay. All right, Flood. I'll Okay. Thank you. You bet. Alder Johnson? Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, at the committee level, you know, I wasn't supportive of using ARPA funds for um, operational expenses. Um, and I think it's really important that everybody understands expenditure restraint and the impact that that has and the way it can create structural deficits for us into the future. And, and why, you know, when we, we patched the budget in the past with one-time sales tax dollars, why it puts us sometimes into a difficult circumstance like we are now. Now that said, and this goes to Alder X point, so um, uh, we had asked, uh, both of us had asked Director Ellen Becker for some one-time expenses that are in the budget. There's a difference between one-time expenses and operational. Operational means we have to pay for those every single year, and body camps are gonna be one of those things into the future. Uh, Director Ellen Becker had called out some things in the police department of budget that would be one-time expense. That total would be $215,500 for those items. Those items, just for everyone's own edification, uh, included um, boat motor for a second boat, evidence exhaust system and cabinets, uh, crime scene lights, um, retrofit uh, to new squads, the pit bumpers. Uh, again, that total, 215500 The point that I wanna make is while, while uh, Alder Burnett's motion here includes operational expenses, these are one time. His total is 263. This is 215. We're talking about a difference of $50,000. Personally, I don't care if it's applied to that or that. The principle's the same within the budget and how it impacts it. His is $50,000 more. Uh, I don't want to split hairs over 50,000. It's like trying to get into a debate over cutting office supplies by 500 and thinking we're going to solve the budget problem. So I do support the motion. I wouldn't support any additional uh, funding to, to try to cover this equipment because I'm going again with the assumption that the amount that Alder Burnett's proposed, whether it's applied towards body cams or any other item, still has the same net impact. So, Alder Eck. I, uh, so I guess what I'm asking is if it could be switched out of the lost revenue, mm -hmm. but out of, into the um, safety, okay. just for shortening it up that current category. Yeah, I don't know it. I'll just throw this out there. I don't, I don't know if we'd be able to definitively state the eligibility. I mean, one thing we could do <coughs> is say if eligible, use out of this. If not, then we know that we could use um, capital expense, organizational priorities. Okay, I'm just looking at it so that w if we want to use the lost revenue, which is more broad, right. then it, there would be more in there. So I guess that would be my motion or my amending <laughs> your motion. So you're making an amendment, uh, amendment to, to Alder Burnett's motion. Yes, that if it qualifies to come out of the crime prevention and um, yep. safety category, that it would. If not, then lost revenue. Okay. Alder Eck makes a motion um, right. to Alder Burnett's, uh, or makes an amendment to Alder Burnett's motion um, to state that we would use ARPA from the um, crime prevention category, if possible, um, for this purpose. And that was seconded by Alder Scannell. Alder, Alder Johnson. Yeah, Mayor, thank you. I, I just want to understand that a little bit more because uh, at our last, not last, uh, the last time we took up the ARPA discussion, I think there were a number of requests that were sort of pending or referred back to staff. And I, I want to get some perspective from Chief, uh, but I also, uh, in, in my memory's failing me a little bit, so if someone from staff could, could refer I think. Um, I know Alder Campbell had a request uh, to, to address a park in his district that I believe was coming out of that bucket too. So uh, I just wanna make sure that we don't leave ourselves shorthanded uh, out, of that, out of that bucket that's meant to kind of proactively address some challenges um, when, you know, if, if the, the broader one can, can satisfy uh, the request today. So Chief, if I could get your perspective on that. Sure, and it's been a long conversation, obviously, with the public safety part of the ARPA award, which started out at about $2 million. We've spent, as I recall, a little under half of that on things that we're already doing. Um, we, it's certainly council's prerogative how to use that money, but we are going to be coming to you fairly soon after we're done with the budget with a, a recommendation to use some amount of that for contingency funded over hire authorization to help smooth out these boom and bust cycles of hiring help that helps in the long term to reduce overtime costs and and has a lot of benefits to it 
Um, there's also some public safety programming that we've had discussions here about using some of that for that we're, you know, we're also looking at other sources of funding, but I just don't have enough right at this moment to tell you I have another way of doing some of these other things that we've talked about doing. Okay, Th thank you, Chief. Um, I guess recognizing that, I think when we created those ARPA buckets, right, we were trying to allocate funds in a way that we're trying to solve maybe some some challenges in our community, and I think of, um, you know, there, there was there was some increased crime in certain areas that we were trying to address with that and recognizing some of the requests you're going to have coming forward. I just would rather go towards the the lost revenue bucket rather than taking away from that bucket that's hopefully going to be coming forward with some proposals to solve problems rather than trying to, quite frankly, fix a budget and pay for things like motors and um, bumpers. <laughs> so I, 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 I'm not... I'm not going to support the amendment only because I'd still rather see it come out of the, the lost revenue bucket that has just a greater amount of flexibility that leaves Chief with, with the funding that he needs to solve the crime problems that we've been talking about. Thanks, Alder. Uh, Alder Grant? Uh, just a reminder, so those categories were set over a year ago. I think a lot of priorities have changed over the year. And I think we need to remember that we have not, we do have a balance in the art funds and we can move those funds to other categories. I think we do need to make sure we are prioritizing what we spend with the ARPA funds going forward. And I don't think it makes sense to use money in a broad category and when that could be applied to something else. While it would be nice to do some art projects in the community, again, if you ask citizens right now, is that a need? I'm gonna guarantee 95% of them are gonna say no and would rather police taken care of when crime is rising. Thank so you. Point of order, Mayor. Yeah. Uh, it, it, just because I want to understand, and make sure, it, my understanding is we really can't change ARPA buckets today. That re, that would require a, yeah. a, a resolution adoption, and quite frankly, none of that can be done in time for the budget. And I don't disagree with the Alder Grant that we that discussion can't happen at a later date, but it just won't help us for the budget discussion. Yeah. yeah. No, that that point is well made. There is just for the public um, to understand. There is a resolution that was passed by council that governs the spending. Of those resources so we would not be able to, to change that on the fly other comments on the amendment seeing none all in favor will signify by saying aye aye, aye. opposed nay nay i think we're gonna have to use the board this is on alder x amendment to um, go first to the crime prevention category if possible on Alder Brunette's motion. Succeed seven to four. Yes. Okay. Retain a motion. Uh, Alder Johnson. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. Obviously, the I, I mean it's it's amended now. Uh, I just wanted to make the point that I still support the motion, uh, but I also want to say, Chief, when those items come up, I sure hope you make those requests out of the lost revenue bucket. I want to make sure that our police have the the resources they need to solve the issues that you're trying to solve that we're asking you to solve. So, thanks, Alder. Any additional comments on that? Uh, I think we still need a motion to approve as amended. Motion to approve as amended. Motion to approve as amended, made by Alder Johnson, seconded by Alder Scannell. Alder Scannell. Guess I'm getting tired already. Did we vote on the amendment? On the board. No, that was the, wasn't that? That was on Alder X amendment. Amendment, mm -hmm. but then on the item itself, we haven't voted. That's what correct. we're voting on now. Okay, that's what, okay. Yeah, we're voting on Alder Burnett's motion. Right. Right now. Correct. Okay, good. So um, we had uh, a motion to uh, approve as amended. Yeah. That was seconded. All in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it, and that item has been approved as amended. Um, let's see. So I think we still need a motion to approve the police department. So a motion to approve. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell. Second. Seconded by Alder Stevens. 
All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and that has been approved. On to item 12, to approve the reclassification of the fire department administrative assistant and approve the fire department budget as amended. Second. Motion to approve by Elder Stevens, seconded by Elder Scannell. Any discussion on this item? Yep. Mayor. Elder Johnson. Thank you. Uh, sorry, I should have done the, the math on this real quick, but I would like to make a motion um, for, again, looking at one-time uh, fire costs, um, again, provided uh, by Director Ellen Becker. Um, I have uh, 43400 which is the new hire uh, clothing costs uh, for, the, for the seven new firefighter positions that have been proposed, along with mattresses. So that would be a total of 63400 I would make a motion to fund those one-time expenses using the uh, lost revenue ARPA bucket, 63400 So Alder Johnson makes a motion to use uh, ARPA resources for items. those one-time dollars. That was seconded by Alder Eck. Yes. Um, we'll go to Chief Litton. Any comments on that at all? No, I don't, I don't have any comments regarding okay. that issue. Sounds good. Any comments on this being your last budget with us? <laughs> 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 no, hold, hold your comments. Yeah, until we're out of the meeting. <laughs> Just a big smile. All right, sounds good. <laughs> Any other comments on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. That motion has been approved. Any other motions? Otherwise, I'll entertain one on the budget itself for the motion fire department. To approve is amended. Motion to approve is amended, made by Alder Johnson, seconded by Alder Scannell. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. And the fire department budget has been approved. Item 13, to approve the Department of Public Works, including engineering, operations, traffic, and equipment replacement budget. Motion to approve, Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell. Second, Second by Alder Weary. Any comments here? Alder Weary. Thank you. Um, yeah, I do have a question. There's some open positions here, I believe. Correct me if I'm in the wrong spot, but I think there's an engineering aide, truck driver, operator, to an admin clerk. And I had, uh, I had emailed and asked uh, for the numbers if you held those open for three months or six months. So I'm hoping <coughs> our magical finance wizards over here. If okay. there's something else we can yeah. come back to. Before we get work. to that, we'll go to Director Grenier. Um, do you have those positions that he stated? There's actually 15 open positions in the DPW right now. Okay, but your position is the one that you're referring to? Three oh. engineering aides. Uh, for that, we had to contract out. So we're paying contracted services for that that was not in the budget. Uh, civil engineer, that is a civil engineer in our utilities division. There are two major initiatives, one of which is an inflow and infiltration uh, study that we want to do that inflow and infiltration is clear water that's entering our sanitary sewer system that goes down to the Green Bay Metropolitan Sewage District plant and has to get treated. So we're paying to treat clean water which is costing all of our sanitary tax or ratepayers. So that position has been open since January. There are simply not a lot of civil engineers out there, but it is a critical position. We do need it. One is the utility manager position. I would strongly uh, suggest that that one not be subject to this uh, with the utility manager leaving to take a position as a public works director in Two Rivers. His duties are currently being split between myself and the assistant director. And I'm telling you, we do not have the capacity to do that on a long-term basis. We have an erosion control specialist. We're currently doing that with one person, where we used to do it with two. That was a test to see if it could be possible. And we are burning out our erosion control specialist. She is on the verge of leaving us. Parking building technician, building maintenance technicians, those positions need to be filled. We're already short staff, as I told you at, uh, at the committee meeting last week. My first budget in 2013, I came in staffed at 227. I'm currently staffed at 204. Uh, we have an electrician. We just added the electrician to the table of organization last year, recognizing that there was a need. I think it would send a very mixed message to my electricians if we suddenly decided not to fund that position while open. 
There are two parking maintenance technicians. I believe we only have four of those in the table of organization to start with. One out of my four parking enforcement officers, that's the people who actually go around and write the tickets uh, for parking enforcement. Uh, don't fill that position, we're gonna be cutting our revenue. Mm -hmm. Truck driver, truck driver, there are 16 truck drivers in our table of organization. They are the primary responding uh, individuals for snow management. We're going into a snow season. Operator two, that's a heavy equipment operator, so loader greater. Again, we're going into snow season. And an admin clerk, the admin clerk we're looking to replace was my most senior admin clerk, and she started with me in <coughs> July and left in November. So I'm working with a rookie staff out there uh, I would strongly suggest that we fill those positions. Uh, folks who don't have a whole lot of seat time here with the department, although they do their very best, uh, they are definitely not as efficient as a long-term clerk who knows our service lines and how they're delivered. Thanks, Director. And Alderweary, could you refresh our memories which positions you were, you were talking about specifically? Certainly, yeah, and I forgot to mention civil engineer because I think there's a note that we are looking to do a market assessment anyway on civil engineers you know, looking to change their pay scale, so it might be a good time to hold that one open. Uh, so the, and I didn't give you that one, I'm sorry, but that is one of them. The uh, civil engineer, engineering aide, truck driver, operator two, admin clerk. <coughs> yeah, most of those that uh, director mentioned were vital. I, I didn't include utility manager, erosion control, parking, and the parking I think is under their own budget anyway, so. Uh, director Allenbecker. These are all current positions that we are it is going to take us a while to try to pull what they're who find the person in position, find the position number, and then try to calculate okay. what the total wages and benefits are, and then we have to try to determine what a quarter of a year would be in our, or a half of a year for delay. Okay. Right? Is that what you're seeing? Delaying. We can come back later. This isn't something that has to be done right now. Yeah. So okay. we can revisit we, it. It will take us a while to yeah. um, pull that list. Okay. So point of information, Mayor. Yeah, Alder Johnson. Uh, if in in the case of what Alder we were talking about, you have multiple positions there. If if we said, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna require or request that you, you hold a position open, let's say five positions, does it have to be exactly like that or is it just a general reduction in salary where the department head could decide how they wanna manage that? I, I'm just curious how that works. You can do whatever you want, basically. Okay, <laughs> that's clear <laughs> enough, okay. So, I, I guess I don't wanna do anything, I wanted that information yeah. for Director Bernier. point. Could I get a list of those positions that are under consideration again? Uh, certainly, uh, the civil engineer, engineering aide, truck driver, operator two, admin clerk, one of each of those. And, and, and I do think that's an excellent idea just to give a dollar value to it and then allocate, you know, hire whichever ones you think need to be hired first and then work from there. That's a great way to do it. Okay, the reason I ask, the civil engineer is in the utilities division, 100% of the salary is off levy. That comes 50% from sanitary, 50% from storm. That's why I didn't Engineering aids are funded a third, a third, a third. So all three of those aids would only have a one third, by reducing, or reducing the hiring date, it would have the effect of one of the aids because only one third of the salary comes from the levy. Uh, truck driver and operator are 100% levy supported as is the admin clerk. Director, Director Allenbeck. I just want to add one additional note. Um, we do take into consideration that some positions wouldn't be filled, right, you know, 100%. We, we budget for 100% and then we back up a turnover. So on page 119, we do already have a $159,000 reduction in the DPW budget for positions that would not be filled 100% um, for next year. Okay, so if you, if you wanted to make a change like this, it would make some sense to use that line item? That might be easier to yeah. in, uh, take a number out of there. Well, actually, that, yeah, that's a reduction. Um, correct, if you, if you reduce that, because it's your full budget backing this number off, um, if you made it bigger, yeah. that would be easier than trying to calculate each one of these positions, and like you said, then it would give the director a chance to change as he as needed or a position opens up instead of these specific positions right but I just want to take into consideration we already have 159,000 taken out for open positions right okay Alderweary any reaction to that I think we should wait then until we get to that portion of the budget I think that's the better way to do it Thanks. okay sounds good so I don't think I don't think there was a motion yet on that no. right no just discussion okay any other discussion points on this budget 
Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it, and item 13 has been approved. That was just approve it as is. Okay. Correct. Thank you. On to item 14 to add $202,995 to the seasonal salary line item number 5003 to hold the reclassification of the park supervisor to recreational manager for a savings of $2,827 to reduce seasonal salaries by $43,868. Um, and that was using ARPA funds, so that's a bit confusing. But to approve the parks, rec, and forestry and equipment replacement budget. Move to approve. Motion Thanks. to approve, made by Alder Johnson, seconded by Alder Scannell. Discussion here? Again, I'm sorry, Mayor. What was the number? 14. 14. Item, f item 14, and then the seasonal salary is 5003. 0003. Okay. Discussion, or, yeah, discussion on that? Alder Scannell? I would like to hear the director's uh, input on this. Thank you. Very good. Uh, Director Ditchite. So what I want to just kind of talk about a little bit, I guess, is the um, position reclassification from a recreation supervisor to a recreation manager. Um, one thing that I, I think would might be worth considering here would be to do something similar to what you're doing with the other positions where you fund it uh, starting Janu or July 1st for half the savings. Uh, that is one, pot one potential. Uh, the other option is uh, I think we could probably reduce our um, park contractual line by that dollar amount and still make ends meet and still uh, go ahead with the position classification. So if it's strictly a budget issue, those would be the two recommendations I would have moving forward. Uh, but if it's a, a discussion about the merits of whether or not to reclassify the position, I'd be happy to answer any questions anyone might have. Great, thank you, Director. Comments or questions yeah. on that? Alder Johnson. Yeah, uh, thank you, Director Ditch, for the explanation. In fact, I had this conversation with someone the other day you know that that after the budget's passed you could just bring the, the reclass forward and then of course it would give you the latitude to figure out how to absorb that within your budget I'm still okay with that but recognizing that we can act on that today and you're willing to kind of sacrifice a different line item to keep it even based on what Finance Committee recommended I would make a motion to reduce contractual services by what was the amount uh, 2827 Yep, so to reduce that so that we can reclassify, approve the reclassification, and then, of course, the adjustment on the salary benefits lines for that position. Second. All right, Alder Johnson makes a motion um, to reduce that, the line item that he stated to make room for that $2,827. It was seconded by Alder Scannell. Any discussion on that? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Further discussion or motions? Motion to approve. Motion to approve. As amended. As amended by Alder Johnson. Is there a second? Seconded by Alder Stevens. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it, and that budget has been approved. Item 15, to approve the miscellaneous budget. Move to approve. Second. Motion to approve made by Alder Johnson. Seconded by Alder Scannell. Any discussion? Seeing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Item 15 has been approved. On to item 16. To increase the line item 54061, fund 217, from $112,000, $112, thousand five hundred dollars to one hundred and fifty two thousand five hundred dollars and decrease line item five five three zero five from two point two five million dollars to two point two one million to create line number five zero 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 three fund two eighteen for four forty three thousand eight hundred and sixty eight dollars for seasonal park salaries using unrestricted lost revenue ARPA funds and to approve the special revenue fund budget as amended Move to approve Motion to approve made by Alder Johnson, seconded by Alder Stevens. Uh, Director Allenbecker. Within this group of special revenue funds, I believe we will have to look at um, 
fun tool with five, which is stormwater. Um, the, in the book, there's an unbalanced budget. It's off by 6,000 something. We would like to mid make an adjustments there. We also want to um, pull the Bay Beach budget, which again is a special revenue fund. Um, the uh, alder, I mean, director would like to make a change there. And then also 218, which is our ARPA fund. This is where you would be approving it. Since we made a change in a general fund account, we also now have to change it within the ARPA fund in, within the special revenue group. So we might want to start with fund 205. Okay. And what would be the the motion, the appropriate motion on 205? Um, We would increase the revenue line by and I will, 6,248, and I'm going to show what page that is on, 167. 46, four, four, six, four, one, five. would increase by 6,248. Okay, is somebody interested in making that motion? Second. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Johnson. Any discussion on that? Just so, yeah, Alder Johnson. Just so that I follow directly, is, it, is this an expenditure restraint impact? This is no. not, this is off levy. Special fund, right. But yeah. this is just a budget that is in this book that was, if you look on page 170, our revenues and didn't match our expenditures. We are 6,248 off when this book was printed. Since then, we've come, they've made the correction. We just need to add to $6,248 to make this a balanced budget for storm. Completely off levy, though. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks for the explanation. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed aye. name. You guys have it. And then there was a Bay Beach. That would be starting on page 179, and then I'm going to turn it over to the director. Director Dichai. Yeah, so I just have a few uh, modifications to the budget that is going to have a 0% net change to the budget as a whole. Uh, one is I wasn't sure when we looked at the park seasonal salaries um, how that would compare to Bay Beach's seasonal salary. So in the agenda packet, you'll see that I have a revised seasonal salary pay plan, which in essence uh, slightly modified Bay Beach's seasonal salaries accordingly uh, to match uh, what we did with the park seasonal salaries. Uh, so in essence, the seasonal salaries actually came down a little bit. So under a line item 50003 seasonal salaries, on page 179, the dollar amount would go from $1,287,676 down to $1,273,640. So there's a little bit of a savings there. And then we also noticed that there was an error on page 181 under line item 59930. Uh, it shows that is uh, our bond payment for the, the, the debt we took out for the shoreline restoration project. Uh, we have in there a line item of $193,063 uh, for the bond payment for 2023. That is actually incorrect. It, it, it is the payment is going to be 164,104. So I would have to change accordingly. That's also a savings of about 20 some thousand dollars. And then to balance it out, uh, the line item just under that 59940, which is a trans, uh, it's in essence what we're doing is um, taking money out of our operations account and putting it into our development account. And that is, is in essence the profit that we make out there per year. And so in that case, because we see a cost savings of those two line items, there would be additional profit, which then we would transfer to the development account. So that number would have to change from 706,157 to 750,363. As I mentioned, it, it all balances out and has no net impact. Plus there is, uh, this is not on the tax levy anyway. Motion has been made by Alder Johnson, seconded by Alder Stoyer. Any discussion or questions for Director Ditchite? None. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Further discussion? Seeing none, entertain a motion to approve. Alder Weary? This, this is on that one item right now. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yep. Go ahead. 
Motion yeah, to approve. We're not Motion approving approve. the budget yeah. yet. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Motion to approve made by Elder Scannell, seconded by Elder Weary. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. And item 14 has been approved as amended. Item 15, oh no, sorry. Item 16 has been approved as amended. On to 17 to approve the debt service fund. To approve. Motion Second. to approve made by Elder Johnson, seconded by Elder Scannell. Discussion? <coughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Item 17 has been approved. Item 18 to approve the capital projects funds budget. To approve. Second. Motion to approve made by Elder Johnson, seconded by Elder Scannell. <laughs> Discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. That item has been approved. Item 19 to approve the internal service funds budget. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve made by Elder Scannell, seconded by Johnson. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. That item has been approved. Item 20 to hold the award of the marketing and branding initiative to North Star Place Branding plus marketing for the sum of $101,000 until grant is applied for and a determination letter is received held from the 920 meeting. Approved. Motion to approve made by Alder Johnson, seconded by Alder Scannell. Alder Burnett. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we, we talked about this at the committee, and I appreciate Alder Johnson's uh, diligence in trying to find a way to fund this, but I've been kicking this around since December. What I'm curious in is we just vote this down, and then we can resurrect this at a different way. Like, we're kind of holding this vendor out there for heaven knows how long until we can get a grant and give it the <laughs> approval, and I just would vote against this I, I think um, unless you have some update for the committee I yeah think we could we could give a brief update if you'd like Alder y yeah go ahead okay uh, Chief Rivera Wagner yes we reached out uh, to the grant that uh, Alder Johnson uh, specified uh, there's some good news and some bad news um, at, there is some availability but it's at a matching grant level of one to one so the most that we can ask for is 75,000 uh, but that would have to be matched one to one so in that case uh, with about a hundred thousand we're looking at about fifty one thousand dollars cost the taxpayers on uh, in addition to that um, they've already uh, granted funds to um, uh, the Chamber of Commerce and Discover Green Bay. So this would be uh, a disproportionate amount of those grant fundings in uh, Brown County. And so there was some hesitation on their part. We did send them the presentation as well as the proposal. They are interested in doing this. They did inquire as to uh, why we are seeking those funds now and I indicated that this was a directive uh, from council. So I am unsure that we will get those funds. We are supposed to hear back uh, even if we are going to be eligible given our presentation, which is supposed to be focused on workforce development, which our branding initiative is, but it still may not qualify for that one-to-one uh, -one match funding. Right. And they had said probably by the end of this week? They said probably by the end of this week. I did mention that we were having this meeting tonight, and I would love a response by today. They said they had to run it by their superiors, and that hopefully will be by Friday, if not next week, but we may be uh, ineligible. Thank you. Alder Burnett. I would make a motion to end all branding initiative, um, you know, funds and not hold the funds any longer, and and bring this back as a separate item that eliminates all reference to any funding from ARPA or budget. So I know that's long, but I think we just need to end it now. Uh, Alder Burnett makes a motion, seconded by Alder Morgan. Just kind of a procedural question for Director Ellen Becker. In terms of the purchasing process here so if if the council rejects this um, and maybe a question for attorney Bunger more appropriately um, if the council rejects this item uh, would that mean that we would have to go back out to RFP um, if interested as Alder Burnett said in, in resurrecting it at a future date Correct. we wouldn't be able to just uh, resurrect the RFP because the award already had been given so if council's wishes are to essentially deny the award because that's a, a Effectively, what's happening um, because they didn't actually approve it um, then we would have to if we wanted to res resurrect the whole concept another RFP would have to go go forward okay thank you attorney Bungert mm -hmm. so there's a motion and a second further discussion on it uh, Alder Johnson yeah I, you know <laughs> look the only thing this is costing us this is not on the budget we are not holding any funds for this there's no request in front of us this is just saying let it go to the finance committee for another week or two until the state can tell us if they're if they'll award us a grant that's all it is that's all it is let let the state 
Let the state make that determination. And if the state comes back and says, no, we're not going to award it, you know what? I'll be the first to get on board at finance committee and receive in place and file. But I'd just like to hear what the state says. I don't know why we would why we would turn that away before the state even makes a determination. And additionally, and, and this is a conversation I've had here, I am personally willing to make requests to fund it so that the taxpayers do not have to. That is the whole point of this, keeping the RFP open so that we can find a solution so the taxpayers do not need to fund this. So I'm against the motion. I'd like to refer it back to committee so that we can have a couple extra days that is necessary uh, to get that determination. Thanks, Alder. Alder Burnett and then Alder Weir. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, this is our opportunity to let it die a death. It's not popular. Uh, we, even if we get the funding for the RFP and the first phase of the rebranding, it's going to cost a lot of dollars in order to implement the suggestions or the organization's recommendations. I've been harping on this thing since December, last December. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I don't think I'm wrong. It's not popular. This is our opportunity just to let it die. And if this is an objective or priority moving forward, then it can be brought to us in a different way. But council, this is our chance to kill it. And I'm definitely in favor of that. Thank you. Alder Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I would agree with uh, Council President Burnett. Um, if there's anything more unpopular than your budget right now, it's, it's the rebranding initiative, believe me. Um, while we might pay for the initial opening of the spigot, it's what comes down the pike that has been widely you know, acknowledged would be expensive, and, and nobody has a stomach for that right now. So um, I'm fine for putting it out to pasture right here and right now, and I'd make a motion to open the floor. I think someone's here to speak. Motion has been made to open Second. the floor. Second. Seconded by Alder Burnett. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The floor is open. Thank you. Tony Tyson, 931 South Baird. Um, I spoke to some people before the meeting. I asked if rebranding was on the, in the budget. I was told it wasn't. So I'm glad I stayed here as long as I did. I would vote this down, end it. The property taxpayer does not want this. It sounds like, uh, so I, I heard, uh, I was at the last meeting when you talked about this, one of the aldermen said something like, if this brings 1,000 more people to Green Bay, it's worth it. You don't know what it's going to do. There's no way to measure this. If you buy playground equipment, your constituents can see it. If you buy a squad car, you can see it. If you fix a street, you can see it. Um, I worked in uh, marketing for 28 years. I, I looked at this proposal. I don't see anything that, tell, that shows you that you're ever going to get a return on this. My wife and I travel a lot. We're retired all over the United States, Canada. We meet people. Where are you from? Green Bay. Oh, the Packers. So whether you like it or not, the Green Bay's brand is the Packers. You could spend a million dollars. You could spend $10 million. You could change it to something else. It's not going to change. It's all money down the rat hole. If you, if you go ahead with this, it is a spigot. You never know how much money is going to have to follow this. I've heard estimates of a million dollars. If you had a referendum on this, it would fail big time. I've been talking to my alderman over the last year on this, and I told Bill, I said, your constituents would vote this down. He said, what if they are wrong? What, the, what do you mean, what if they are wrong? Your constituents cannot be wrong. This is a rat hole. I'm out west a lot. I see news out west. People out west are suffering for water. We have the Great Lakes, OK? Green Bay's got a big selling point. Everybody knows where it is. If somebody wants to bring a business here, they're going to bring it whether you rebrand or not. I read something uh, that was in US News and World Report this summer, listed uh, 150 cities, some pretty nice places, Nashville, Austin, places that have a lot of businesses. Green Bay out of 150 was listed number three. People know where Green Bay is. People know we have the Great Lakes. People know all about Green Bay. You can spend a ton of money, and yes, if this was going to, if you prove this spigot and you start spending money, five years from now, how many of the planners are going to still be here? I was in your seats for 28 years. You have turnover. How many aldermen are going to be here? Who's going to tell you five years from now 
whether you got anything out of spending this money. Nobody's ever going to tell you that. Mr. Ten Tyson, years from now. Mr. Tyson, your three minutes has elapsed. Do you want to just wrap thank it up you. for us? Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you, you're never going to. People want stuff that they can see. People at Green Bay do not want this. This is your chance to kill it. Please kill it. The, the taxpayers of Green Bay want this voted down. Thank you. Right, thank you, sir. Motion to close the floor. Motion oh. to close the floor. Janet Angus, 1403 Shirley Street, Green Bay. I'm against the rebranding. Tony Tyson just brought up our water. Our water is huge here. There are so many people that are already currently moving here from out west because of our water. We don't need to rebrand. We've got the Packers. We're a great community. But we do, we do need to do is we need to, as you said, Mayor, keep property taxes in check. It was in your flyer. I saved it. Keep property taxes in check. You're not doing that tonight. You're voting yes on everything. So far as I've been sitting over in the peanut gallery. It's disturbing. This is the largest tax increase we've had in Green Bay in decades. In decades. We have unfortunate, we have really some people who are really struggling right now, our seniors. Taxes have gone up. People are going to lose their houses. You said you'd keep property taxes in check, and you're not doing it. And you know what? A lot of you, when you ran for office, you said you were going to keep property taxes in check. Not happening. The rebranding has to stop. Start saying no instead of yes to everything. Thank you. All right, thanks, ma'am. Any other comments? Uh, Mark Berglund, 806 North Broadway. I didn't intend on speaking on this, but I do have some comments. Uh, as, as far as, and, and my comments are in no way any slight to what we are doing today as a city or the police department or anything like that, what they are doing. But personally, and I, and I love my city. I love working for the city. I never plan on moving away. But in my opinion, I think the city has what I call some housekeeping items to take care of first. A um, couple months ago, I drove past St. John's Park, which of course is across the street from St. John's Shelter, at about 11 a.m. On, on, on a Sunday morning. I counted no less than 60 people, homeless people, living there. They, they are circled around the whole block between the sidewalk and the curb. You want to bring more people to Green Bay? All it would take is one circle, one block, that is St. John's Park, and they would never move here. The other thing is the escalating crime. And like I say, I don't want to slight the police. I think they're doing a good job, but I think there's things that we need to address. You know, you, you don't, you know, you don't want to have the slogan, and, and I don't mean this in a bad way, come to Green Bay where we have shots fired once a week. You know, that's... <laughs> I don't mean that literally, but I think that the city has a lot of housekeeping items to take care of before we can make an effort to attract more people to Green Bay, which I think we should. And, and it's kind of interesting, Mr. Tyson's comment. I myself was in the state of Oregon last week and went to a couple of places as a tourist, and everybody said, so where are you from? I'm from Green Bay, Wisconsin. Packers. Everybody knows the Packers everywhere, and in fact, <laughs> Grants Pass, Oregon, has a huge Packer fan base. <laughs> so, you know, we are known for a lot of other things. I just think that there are a lot of things in this city that we need to address before we start trying to make it more attractive to get people in here. You know, and, and I don't have any answers for these, but I think that these are some things that we should look at. We should, you know keep on looking at what we can do to reduce crime uh, and what we can do with the homeless population. Of, of course, I'm a little more in tune with that because where do the homeless go? They go to Green Bay Parks. So I hear a lot of that. So anyway, All thank right. you. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Good evening. Um, Polly Razor, 419 East Lake Captain Circle, Green Bay. I guess I just want to reiterate exactly uh, what Mr. Tyson, Jan Nagus, and Mr. Mark, I think Mark, you're on your tag, <laughs> had mentioned. Um, 
This is the largest increase I think we've had in decades. I think it's almost at the max that we can increase for legal reasons. I don't know exactly what that all means, but um, this time in our history of what's going on, we have um, baby boomers aging out of working force. Their retirement funds are, are capped. I mean, they've got their income fixed. We have a large amount of population aging, and to do this at the time that our seniors are struggling, um, our gas prices are up, our milk prices are up, eggs, everything. Um, I, I too have to say I'm quite disappointed to hear all the yeses tonight. Um, I have not talked to anybody that in the city in the last few weeks that's very happy about this budget. Um, we're paring down little here, little there. Um, I think the it's a mayor's job. Everybody says it's the council's budget. It's the council's budget. It's the mayor's budget. Mayor has a staff. Mayor ha is the CEO of of creating this budget. When you work in budgets in the private industry, we want to pare down the budget by 10%. You find a way. I think the council members are part-time people. I don't think it's your job to sit and go line by line by line. I think it needs to go back to the mayor, back to his staff, and they need to rework this budget. Thank you. Thanks. Any other comments? All right, motion to close the floor. Second. Motion to close the floor made by Alder Johnson, seconded by Alder Burnett. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay, the ayes have it. Alder Burnett? Yeah, um, Attorney Bungard, I just want to make sure, because this is a little confusing. My motion was long and rambling, admittedly. Uh, if my motion it, you know, sustains and people vote for my motion, then it basically effectively ends rebranding. That It can only be com come back in an entirely different format. Is that correct? It, it essentially would effectively deny or reject the item of awarding the marketing okay. and reband and branding initiative as presented. All right. So uh, it's it's a vote to deny versus right now it, it has been on hold. So vote yes ends rebranding as we know it. Yeah. It ends okay. the request, okay. not rebranding in general. It. Like it, it okay. could always come back, but I'm All saying right. this this particular request, if you vote yes on the motion, you're denying the award of the contract okay. and pursuing the project as presented. All right, I urge the council to vote yes for obvious reasons. Thank you. All right, we have a motion and a second. Yeah. Alder, Scannell, then Johnson. Oh, Johnson, Johnson, then Scannell. All right, thank you, Mayor. I, I just want to be clear because some comments were made by the public. This is not a budget item tonight. This is part of the Finance Committee report, but this is not part of the budget item. So, so this means no taxpayers are being pledged to this. No recommendation is being made to this, but there is, you know, at the end of the day, I'm not foolish. I know the votes are here to, to reject it tonight, but this thing is the single-handed biggest boogeyman that doesn't exist. <laughs> that is the reality. We're not talking about a single penny of taxpayer dollars that are being requested for this tonight. And, and so, like, at the end of the day, this is not a hill I want to die on, I'll tell you that. It's really not. If this needs to just go away and, and maybe reemerge as something different, if, if it's a priority, if it's a priority, we can do that. But there has been no commitment of future taxpayer dollars. There's no commitment of current taxpayer dollars. I, I you know, it, it, whatever. But it's, it, I'm, you know, I'll, I'll support the motion again because I just, I think we should have waited for the grant just to see what our options were. I'm always a believer in preserving options. Uh, but like I said, this isn't a hill I want to die on, and I don't want it to get tied to the budget in a negative way that, you know, oh, my gosh, this, this was part of the budget when it's not. It's not. And I just think everybody needs to be clear about that, that this is not a budget proposal tonight. So, um, And, and I'm, I, I'm happy to have supported uh, as many of you did, in fact, the majority of you did tonight, over a half a million dollars of cuts, and we're not done yet. So uh, I don't think we voted yes on everything, and I think this is another example of something that this council is, I imagine, is going to support. So um, that's it, Mayor. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Scannell and Alder Morgan. Uh, I'll die on this hill. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think it is a boogeyman. I think people say it's unpopular in some quarters, yeah, and others, no. And there's been so much misinformation. And I think part of it is we use the term <coughs> rebranding. Really what we're doing is marketing our city. Smart cities market themselves. 
And you can't say, oh, we got the Packers, that'll do it. Sure, that opens the door. That opens, a lot of people know where we are all over the world. That doesn't mean they're going to move here or invest here. That opens the door. That gets their eyes. That, that, that gives us the leverage. But then we have to have a marketing plan to take advantage of that. Uh, I, I appreciate the housekeeping items. Yeah, they're always housekeeping items. We're the third largest city. Uh, homelessness is a growing issue all over the, uh, the country. We're going to have housekeeping issues always. That doesn't mean we stop marketing ourselves. You stop marketing yourselves, you stop, you're, you're shooting yourself in the foot for growth. You're not going to grow? Well, then you're going to be in a bigger bind for taxes. I, I don't get the reasoning there, other than the boogeyman. Ooh. It's a lot of horse dung. And I'm not going to play that game. To be fiscally responsible, we need to market our city. If we want to grow as a city, we need to market our city. Think of any business. Some of you are business people. You don't invest in your business, what happens? You have to invest in our city. You can't stop investing in your city. Otherwise, people are going to see that, and they certainly aren't going to be interested in us then. So I don't give in to the boogeyman, and this is not a budgetary item. People are just in misinformation out there. It's just horrible. And I wish we could perhaps get away with the idea of rebranding. What we're doing is marketing, and that's smart. And a third largest city in Wisconsin needs to do it if you want to keep growing. And if you want to worry about your taxes, grow, and that'll help with your tax base. So there, I've died on my hill. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Morgan. First, I'd like to say I did listen in and uh, committee meeting where North Star did their uh, proposal and all that, and I was really impressed with it. I, it changed my opinion on some of the stuff that this all entails, and marketing is a big thing for everything, yes. But surprisingly, I had very few people call me up to question things on the budget. The very few that did had questions, of, of course, about the tax rate going up, and the taxes, and their houses are being higher. And I asked them, as I asked all the people when I went door to door, when I was campaigning to take this position, what their issues are, and they all said, taxes going up. And I said, do you have ideas yourself on what you think could help the taxes going down? And they didn't bring up so much at this time, but I do remember going door to door all those months. I'd say, what can we do? And they would. One of the things that I heard over and over and over was, why does Green Bay have to be rebranded? And the other thing was, uh, our count, this council, as we sit now, had nothing to do with it. They were all upset about the uh, water tanks and all that stuff. And at this point, I'm seconding this thing, and I'm going to vote yes for this uh, amendment or here to because. I remember the people, what they told me, and I want them to know I listened to them, and I think this is something that can come back up as a marketing proposal at a different time, but at this time, we need to cut more to make our citizens that gave their trust in us. So I'm gonna vote no on this. Thanks, Excuse Alder. me, yes on the <laughs> proposal. Sounds good. Thanks, Alder. Alder Campbell? Yes, I'll follow up same way. As a new alder also, well before I was elected, one of the main concerns was, what's this rebanding thing about? We don't need to reband it. We don't need to waste all this money in it. And you know what? There's a lot of times, uh, you know, your constituents don't really put a lot of time into it, but it seemed pretty simple for them to look into it and, and look at, you know, and they were like, so what does it entail? Every, first, it was all just a logo, right? Well, everybody learned, including us, that it's going to be done. So will it change? Will it bring people here? No, the Packers are all the way. I agree with the speakers that were here. Um, it's not going to change. If you would put this on a referendum, you'd get a lot of orders out because I'll tell you what, they're gonna, they'll are gonna they come out for that one simple item that they can understand. Maybe they don't understand that Eight it isn't going to... Point order, please. Yep, yep. Alder Campbell, you have the floor. And what I'm trying to say is 
you know, and thanks, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they don't want this. And if we go back and this one item passes, I'll have to go back and say why, okay? Maybe I won't get reelected because of this stupid little thing that we've been kicking around and kicking around. We can say we're kicking around, call it whatever you want to call it. But that's simple for them to understand, and they don't understand. And I totally disagree that it's not going to cost taxpayers because it's going to cost way more money down the road. Where are we going to get it from? It doesn't guarantee. Any, any kind of advertising does not guarantee that you're going to get that business. You've got to have the people here. If the people don't like it, they're not going to come and buy from you if they don't like just because you change your logo. It ain't going to change my mind. We need to kill this thing now. Thanks. Are there any other comments? All right. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Nay. The ayes appear to have it. We are on to item 21, to advance without a recommendation an amendment to the five-year Axon agreement fully executed in December 2020. Uh, yeah, we can take a break for five minutes. Six. Six. Was it you, Randy? Oh. Call the council back to order. I have no idea what you're talking about. Call the council back to order. All right, so we are on item 21, which is to advance without a recommendation an amendment to the five year Axon agreement fully executed December 2020. Um, Chief, you, Chief, you want to refresh our memory on this one? So this is to fix a, a problem that we have in our Axon contract. And again, that covers not only body cameras, but also tasers. Uh, what this does is this allows us to <laughs> issue a taser to every sworn member of the department. This can be important on days when we have more people working than we have tasers for big events. Uh, typically is what that looks like. We have gone through since the Joint Personnel and Finance Committee and scrubbed this one more time. Uh, we were able to get a total of just over $57,000 out of the three-year total of this for some interview room cameras that we're going to buy with uh, that's 2021. 2021 CIP money instead of the rental service from Axon. So we were able to get this down to $69,583.33 a year. Um, this is Axon's cost for adding the number of tasers that we need and also a number of dashboard cameras for some additional vehicles we anticipate adding to the fleet. Um, <laughs> Again, this can be a little bit of a shocking number when you look at this, but this is also all the service behind these things. So when we download the taser to get the firing record in a taser activation case or the storage for the videos, you know, unlimited storage, being able to catalog it, not having to maintain expensive server infrastructure on premise, that's what this does for us. So. Um, it's not cheap, but the, the alternative to this would be, um, particularly for the additional tasers, that we run a risk there that if there is a significant use of force involving someone that we can't issue a taser to, I guarantee you we will be asked why we were not able to issue that piece of equipment. Okay. Thanks, Chief. Uh, I'll go to maybe members of the Finance Committee. Any suggestions here? If not, other Alder Johnson. Sixty-nine thousand is basically the number that you need, right? Sixty-nine thousand dollars a year for the remainder of the Axon contract, yes, sir. Right, and so that to me is an operational expense. So if we were to put that into your police budget, under which account would that go? It's the. That's the Taser. Where's the Taser budget? Director Allenbecker, yeah. Treasurer Manley. My uh, question was which line item this taser project would go into? It's in the 423, 423 fund. fund. 
correct, it would be on page 211. 211. Um, it's the same line item that we just reduced by 263,000. That would be the line item in which it would get added back into. Okay. Again, and, and I guess I, because it is an operational expense and it's something that we're going to have to pay for every year until that contract's over, to me it makes the most sense to just have it placed in there. And then if they're, you know, if folks want to counterbalance that, if they want to cut other places, I mean, I'm sure there's still a little bit more work to do here. It just makes the most sense to me to put it in there so then it's in the budget and then, then we get a, you know, that that's part of your budget for the next X number of years. Mm -hmm. No different than body cams or anything else. So I'd make a motion to add that 69,000 and change uh, to the account number that Director Ellen Becker just referenced. Okay. Second. Seconded by Alder Scannell. Motion was made by Alder Johnson. Discussion on that motion? Alder Morgan? I remember us talking about it when we were discussing the budget one time, and of course everyone knows my history as a dinosaur and police work for many years, and uh, it was awesome when we finally got tasers. It really was. And the same stuff happened with my agency. Can we afford to buy enough for everybody? And there were times, you know, we started out, we didn't ha everybody didn't have one. And there would be people would come in that were going to work a Packer game or someone was going to work out at the Brown County Veterans Complex. And they would get, the, they'd have to get there so early to try to get one. And then it the, didn't happen a lot, thank God, but a few times I do remember officers having to go hand on hand with subjects. The taser would have prevented that. And it put them in a position to get hurt. It put the suspect in a position to get hurt. So I think this is something we can't be too frugal on. I'm all for if we can find a different way of budgeting it, but I, I'm definitely for making sure that all the officers have one available to them and use some discretion. I know like our courthouse, we just assigned like five or six there and they took them out as they needed them. But it's something that the, the officer on the street, the officer going to work as an officer needs the tools to do the job correctly to protect themselves, to protect the citizens, and everyone else involved. Thank you, Alder. Any additional comments on Alder Johnson's motion? Alder Johnson? Yeah, and I just didn't say it, but thank you, Chief, because I know that's that's less than, you know, what's kind of called out here, so I appreciate the work that you did recognizing tough budget season and to make this as lean as you could, so. Thanks, Alder. Any other comments? None? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. And that motion has been approved. It's 69,583 and 33 cents. Yes, ma'am. All right. So that brings us to item 22, which is sort of a, a catch all. Um, if people have general motions that they'd like to make or things that uh, have not been made yet. Um, and maybe at this point, since this is sort of the point of this item, if Director Ellen Becker could give an update to where things stand with the uh, action taken tonight so far. Sure, I had it ready until they made this last minute change. <laughs> <laughs> but should all calculate. So um, to date, um, we have reduced, ex with the um, latest change, we have ex reduced expenses 312,371. And we reduced the levy by 455850 which that has changed our, our starting coming into the meeting was at, um, mill rate was um, an estimated mill rate. Um, our values are not finalized yet. Our um, manufacturing did not get equalized by the state yet. So at this point we are sitting at, we started at a 780, um, as we came into this meeting, we are sitting at 776. So it dropped about four, four and a half cents. All right, thank you, Director. Uh, Director or, uh, Alder Johnson and then Alder Scannell. Okay. Uh, do we have to, if we've got an amendment that we want to make to a previous report, do we need to reconsider? Can we just make the motion right here? We make it. Okay, perfect. Uh, so I'm going to go back to uh, community economic development, which was item 10 in here, but just that's the budget. There is a one time expense that is budget that is directly tied to um, contractual services, 53001, $50,000 professional services to help with sale of city-owned properties. So this would be 
um, expenses that would be necessary if we're going to sell a property, you know, titles, land division, delineations, stuff like that. So um, it's a one-time expense, again, directly related to those land sales. So I would make a motion um, that we reduce that $50,000 to $25,000. Uh, and I did talk with Director Steck Schulte, though, if he wants to comment on this, he certainly can. Um, and, and so I'm not looking to offset it, just a, a motion to reduce 50 to 25. Okay, Alder Johnson. Which line item is that? Uh, 53001, contractual services. Okay. And you're making a reduction from 50 to? From 50,000 to 25,000. Is that what the total is, 50, or is that 50 just for the land sales? So really, it's just to reduce it by 25000 Okay. <coughs> Is there a second for that? Yeah. Second by Alder Scandal. Director Steck Schulte, any comments yeah. on, on the motion? Uh, yeah, just specifically to... Sorry. Know. Let callers know this is a, in case there's the needs for uh, basically any professional services related to preparing the land for transfer that could be um, uh, survey work, land division, uh, environmental review, wetland delineation, uh, any number of things we need generally need to do to have a property ready for transfer. Uh, in most cases, uh, projects require some level of that of preparation for prior to transfer. Um, so it, it, I think in co conversations with Alder Johnson, uh, willing to reduce that down to 25,000 in the event that if we did need something, we would still need to just come back to this body if for some reason we needed to go past that number. But we're, we're comfortable going to 25. Okay, thank you. Can I just comment on that, Mayor? Yeah. Uh, so um, land sales is obviously a, a, one of those things that is um, highly um, anticipatory, meaning you, you want to sell them, but sometimes you don't always do that. And, uh, and so recognizing that that expense, you know, something that could be very fluid. And I did mention to Director Sexualty that if, in fact, we are highly successful with land sales and it's going to cost him more in contractual service to do that, that uh, he could certainly do that through the contingency fund which, as you know, is in the budget to actually uh, increase that again this year, which I think is a good move, but uh, I, I kind of offered that. And, of course, we've got TIDs that if you, you have an eligible expense out of a TID, you could, you could borrow against the TID as well and do that. But he's got options there is my point. Thanks, Alder. Any additional comments on that motion? None. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed aye. Aye. nay. Yeah, it's have it. The motion is successful. Mayor, do I still have the floor? Or how does um, that work? I'll Either way, I'm happy to okay. share. Yeah. I'll do where? Mine will fit back perfectly. <laughs> so. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> it's land sales, actually. <clears throat> and that is? Page 83, line 48300. Land sales is, is currently at 150000 And, Neil, thank you. We exchanged some emails back and forth about what would be perhaps a reasonable number to put it to and you weren't very comfortable with 250,000 but would 225 be be something I know there's going to be increased emphasis on trying to sell land is that something we can can shoot for and obviously if, if anyone if I can have a guarantee that Alders here will be willing to buy some property if for some reason we get to November and we're not quite there um, obviously with these well, certainly with these uh, I'll share some comments I shared with Alder Weary and his inquiry certainly in these economic conditions in terms of interest rates and material costs and other things certainly facing some economic headwinds uh, in terms of our housing projects many of those projects are either requesting severely discounted land or even free land a lot of occasions however our, our commercial and our industrial properties are, are having some good uh, prospects, I think, coming into 2023. Um, so I think we, we you know, certainly a, a stretch number, I would say, Alder, but I think one we'd be willing to agree to. So, Alder, worry. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm seeing some some numbers on the sides of me here. That that 250 is the number we should go for. So I'm going to put that in there. Second. <laughs> I trust in you, Neil. In Neil, we trust. Okay. Alder Weary makes a motion to increase <laughs> that land sales number from, I think it's 150 to 250. That was seconded by Alder Johnson. Alder Burnett. Uh, Director Steck Schulte, when we talk of, by the way, I support the motion, but when we talk about selling land, obviously selling land for the purpose of development, commercial growth, residential, like what types of properties are available? Are there lots in neighborhoods? Is it going to be easy to develop that? Give us an overview of this. What, what does it mean? 
Yeah, I think in terms of uh, certainly our RDA and the city owns a variety of properties throughout the city, with many of them whose which their intention is specifically to re get them redeveloped and back on the tax roll. That is absolutely the purpose of the city owning and acquiring those properties. Um, I think the you know some of the key examples certainly for the dollar figures we're talking about, we'd be focusing on our larger properties. Uh, I think we have you know three or four properties that are currently available in the in the new Grandview Industrial Park would be a good example. I think it probably has our largest potential. Uh, those lots are probably around around I think like 10 acres four acres and three acres um, market value for that has been in the in the, the 35 to forty thousand dollars an acre range uh, so un, uh, unincentivized we could certainly make that make those funds up with a couple of sales pretty quickly generally those do involve some degree of subsidy would be one example um, I think another example would certainly be the uh, the Adam Street surface parking lot down here eventually is a great redevelopment site that the city certainly currently used for parking and is making some revenue in there, but obviously getting that possibly something sold uh, in there. Uh, I think another example is the, the lot on the Chicago and Monroe intersection would be a good example. I think that's a four to five acre parcel. Um, each one of those generally you know, has uh, some opportunities related to if we can actually get some uh, purchase dollars up front there's a probably a way to work with potential developers if it's in a TIF district or something way to maybe kind of balance that out to allow them to to maybe accelerate that upfront investment from the developer and then hopefully get paid back uh, as the project develops so so we do it those are three examples I think all the larger properties that would really definitely be our focus to help meet this number all right one final question what are you wasting your time here for? <laughs> Go sell some of that land. That's safe. It's prime selling hours. Like we'll make sure that that marketing budget stays in there a little right. bit. Give me a little bit on there. We'll, right. make, we'll, make, we'll put it to good use. I Thanks promise. for the answers. I appreciate that. Thanks, all <laughs> Director Alan Becker. Yes, I, uh, finance, of course, is very, very um, game for selling land. I just want to be cautious that we typically, when the land is sold, it goes back to the funding source at which it was originally purchased. So if it was really originally purchased with um, parking, utility, money, division money, or the TIF, it would go back into TIF and it would not come back into here. And so I know there is, we have a full chart of all the land that's available, but there isn't as much of it, a large, small percentage of it would come back into the general fund. So I just want people to be cautious. If we sell it, it may go into a different funding source because that's how it was paid for. Yeah, yeah. that's a good point. Uh, Alder Johnson and Alder Stoyer. Yeah, and it, it, obviously I support the motion. motion. I think, um, and I appreciate the, that additional information from Director Ellen Becker. Um, you know, there's, when we talk about the mill rate, right, and it's, it's not always about cuts, cuts, cuts. There's another way that you reduce the mill rate and that's you, you generate revenue. So this is one of those items that actually would, would impact the mill rate were to go down, but of course we have to be responsible with what that number is. We can't just put a make-believe number in there. Um, and I think 250 is a responsible number. Uh, I think we can do that. It's, uh, I remember years ago when I first started, um, you know, there were numbers in there like a half a million. I think one year was even a million. So I think 250 is a very uh, common sense number to have in there that, that will, uh, you know, drop the mill rate a little bit. and. Uh, and I think give uh, Director Steck Schulte a little bit of a stretch goal uh, to produce some results for the city. So not that he's not doing it already, but go get him, Tiger. <laughs> Thanks, Alder. Uh, Alder Stoyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I, I also support the 250000 as well. Uh, I, I'm thankful to uh, Director Ellenbecker for giving us that about the land. I, I had some preconceived notions of, of the land, you know, when you sell it, where does it go? And the fact even if it goes to parking utility or some other function, it's still saving money or doing something somewhere. It may not come to where, where, where we want it, but it's still a good thing. So okay. that's all. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Any other comments on the land sales item? If that makes sense. What? Seeing none, all in favor, yeah. signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it, and that motion is successful. Alder Johnson? Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, I do have two motions I want to make yet, but again, if you want to stagger it because somebody else has something, that's fine. Um, the one I want to look at is fuel. We have, uh, and that crosses a lot of different departments, and it is budgeted or estimated right now uh, that we will see an increase of fuel expenses this year of eight hundred and seventy-seven thousand dollars is that right 877 so uh, of course that is a, an inflationary pinch uh, fuel prices have gone up right now but I also think it would be short-sighted to think that they're gonna come all the way back down um, but I think you could certainly look at this and say that's a one-time expenditure um, but I wouldn't look at the full 877 as a one-time expenditure so I'm gonna make a motion 
uh, for half a million, five hundred thousand um, uh, dollars, that that be supported through the general fund balance. Okay, Alder Johnson makes his motion. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Alder Eck. Discussion from council. Seeing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and that motion is successful. Any other motions aside from Alder Johnson? Alder Wary? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, page 118. There's two of them actually, line 46434 and 46440. It's early set out fees and weed fees. <clears throat> Just looking at what they were last year and, and looking ahead to this year. Uh, I would propose for the early set out fees on line uh, 46434 to be 35,000 instead of 25,000. So the second page again? It's page 118. Make sure I got my page right. So, yeah. Is there a second for Alder Weary's motion? And that's, that's based on, you know, we had 28,000 and 21, and we're going to have actuals this year if it looks like 41,000. So 25,000 budgeted seems a bit low. That's why I bumped it up to the 35 to be in between the two years. Is that a revenue? Yeah. 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 Revenue. Yeah. Second. Second. Okay, Elder Weary makes the motion seconded by Elder Scannell. Any discussion on that? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. That motion succeeds. Alder Johnson. Yeah. Uh, this one is, uh, this motion is going to have, um, it would not have an impact on the levy or the mill rate. Um, but I want to talk about, uh, and, and this has been brought up by our speakers. I think we saw it through email, uh, but it's employee raises uh, right now. Uh, employee raises are scheduled to take effect October 1st. I can't recall when exactly that was done. Employer raises used to be January 1st. It went, there was a year where it was moved to October uh, because of the tough budget year, which seems to be every year. Um, but I think we have an opportunity here to address this a little bit differently this year around. And uh, you may recall uh, Chief Falls uh, had proposed about a half a million dollars in ARPA funds um, to be used for employee bonuses. And we've obviously, we've done a round of bonuses uh, for employees already, so I'd rather maybe kind of shift that request a little bit and look at it for bumping up the timing of the employee raises so that we can start to shift that back into alignment of where it used to be. And so the, uh, the um, I believe the three month impact on that, uh, according to Director Ellen Becker was, Hundred and ninety four thousand, uh, hundred ninety five thousand. So recognizing again that that Director Falls had previously requested a half a million, uh, I would like to make a motion that we implement employee raises starting April first. So it'd be six months. So one ninety five times two, which would be three ninety. So that would put it uh, April first, and that we use lost revenue ARPA to cover that, so that it would have again a, a zero impact on. On the levy or the tax rate. <coughs> All right, Alder Johnson makes the motion, and it was seconded by Alder Stevens. Discussion on that, Alder Scannell. Uh, I'm not sure I want to use ARPA funds. I believe now that we've whittled some away, we have wiggle room to go back up to uh, uh, our ERP expenditure, which we certainly want to do. Uh, if we don't, we're going to be shooting ourselves in the foot if we don't. Use it, go up to our ERP restraints. Uh, the formula, for those who are not aware, will uh, shortchange us next year. We do not use our, that's the way the formula works. So it, it works against you actually from being fiscally uh, reducing, uh, you're gonna get less state money. So, well, cause you're new and, and everybody else is running away. <laughs> uh, Yep. Uh, so I, I'm, I think we've got wiggle room uh, to do that without using ARPA funds. So I, I, I would rather we didn't use the ARPA funds. Mm -hmm. okay. I, Mayor, can I respond Thanks, to that? Alder Johnson. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate what you're saying. I just want a budget we can pass. And, and I think right now, you know, there's, uh, we got to be honest with ourselves about that conversation. And so that's why I'm opting to use uh, the ARPA. And I fully recognize as well, uh, I understand 
expenditure restraint. I get it. Uh, but I think we got to get something that a majority of council can get on board with and support. And I guess I would rather leave my motion as is. If it fails, you can certainly come back with a different motion. Uh, but I'd like to, to act on the motion as presented. Alder Scannell. I, 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 uh, I still would rather, you know, uh, be fiscally responsible and uh, look forward to our future and uh, do what we need to do for next year's budget where we're going to be, you know, every year's budget is tight. It hurts. And we're only going to make it tighter and hurt more if we screw around with our ERP formula, you know, if we don't get the, the funding from the state that we can get. So uh, they, they have that formula. We need to play ball with them until they change it. Uh, so I, uh, I appreciate uh, the sentiment that maybe um, fellow alders don't want to be fiscally responsible. Is that what we're saying? Or I don't know. Uh, uh, I didn't say that. No, yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying it either, but I think uh, I'm hoping the new alders realize that if we do not go up to our expenditure restraint, we are hurting ourselves. We're shooting the city in the foot for our budget next year. So you really want to uh, be very careful about what you're doing this year. And so I'm going to oppose using ARPA funds, since we now have the wiggle room, to uh, not use them and get up to our, as long as we don't go over, which I believe we can do, move that up, I think, to at least April. Uh, so I am still going to oppose this. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Alder. Just because there's been a fair amount of discussion on expenditure restraint, was curious if uh, either Treasurer Manley or Director Ellenbecker could give us where we're at. Right, so I got yeah. Yeah. Pull that information up. Um, since overall we have to reduce our expenses by 337371 we had maxed out our expenditure restraint coming out of um, joint personnel. Mm -hmm. So that would say we now have capacity of 337371 for the expenditure restraint. Okay. Thank you. Alder Eck? Um, so I just wanted to I, kind of clarify um, with Alder Scannell. Um, so you're saying you don't want to move it up to April? You want to keep it at, a, at October 1st? Because um, we're going the wrong direction if we're going to, when you talk about wiggle room, um, we're trying to reduce the budget, not equalize it by adding this back in. So that's my, two, my thoughts on that. Thanks, Alder. Alder Burnett? Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, you know, good question. It's, nowhere is it written that we have to go fully to the R ERP limit. I mean, that's exactly the point, Alder. I, I agree with you. It's too much, Alder Scan. We may just disagree, but the, the sheet that we all got when we met with the mayor and his staff, we were allowed to increase 7.5 million roughly. We went to, he, um, the mayor's budget went to 7.4 million. So we had about a $120,000 of wiggle room, which we maxed out at the committee level, which I voted against. Uh, but last year, the ERP increase, it was 3.4 3 million, and we went to that amount. So we're going from 3.4 million to about 7.5, according to the sheet that we got, we're increasing 4.1 million. Nowhere is it written that we have to go to the full ERP. Um, we're going to make tough cuts, and we are making some tough cuts, but we can't just add to it just because there's wiggle room here. We're going to add, like, that's the opposite where I think a majority of us are working towards. So we just disagree, that's all. I it's still Alder. like you. Yeah, I mean, it's just we disagree. <laughs> Alder Morgan? As the rookie here again, ERP, that's what is told, but we are. Sure, your microphone, that. Alder? Sorry. No problem. Being the rookie here, as the ERP, that's what we are legally allowed to spend, right? Uh, it's my belief, like I said, talking to constituents and stuff, they want to see their tax bill down. So I think we don't have to worry about what they tell us we can spend, is we've got to watch what we're spending and find every way possible to keep our citizens' tax bills down. That's it. All right, thanks, Alder. Alder Weary? <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I remember back before we had expenditure restraint. I personally don't like it. I think each city should be responsible for their own budget. Each representative should have to answer to their people. I don't like it either. <laughs> and it came from people I, you know, tend to like, but it's wrong. Um, most years it's two, three, four percent. I don't know, maybe one. You know, somewhere in there, two, three, four percent. This year, I, I believe, uh, Director, eight percent. That's the max, right? Eight. Woo. 
So, I, you know, do you really want to tell your constituents, man, you know, my hands are tied because we have to m tax to the max because my hands are tied. <laughs> tax to the max. You know, that, that, that doesn't... <laughs> I like that saying. I just came up with it. Uh, 8%. Holy cow. That, that's not going to fly no matter how you spin it, no matter how you explain it, except for people who are really well off and have the extra money. So we really need to tighten it up, and I think we're, we're doing a good job plodding along here. And I'm, I'm in favor of what you're trying to do with your motion, Alder Johnson. All right, thank you. Any other comments on this? There's a question. Uh, Alder Scandal for a second time. Yep. How much, if we uh, were talking about 325000 something like that? Uh, uh, 390. 390. So what percent, how much is that on the mill rate? Can we get that calculation? Yep. For every 18,500, that is a penny. Oh. Yeah, about 4.7 cents, just under uh, 5 cents. Reduct. Um, it would be an increase back. Any other comments? Hold this channel. No, no, I just wanted to let everybody know how it's, it's not really all that much. Okay. But there you go. Thank you. Any other comments on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay? Nay. The ayes have it, and that motion is successful. Any other motions? Uh, Alder Brunette. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. We uh, made some positive movement in the fire department, adding positions that help us with our overtime. Our overtime is still increasing higher. Well, it's overall personnel costs for the firefighters is going up. And just for the sake of saving some money, I'm not looking to make a substantial cut in the firefighter overtime, but I'd like to make a motion to reduce $927,821.60 to a flat $900,000. It saves about $27,800. So Alder Burnett makes a motion to reduce that overtime line in the fire department by 27? $27,821.60. And that was even $900,000. A seconded by Alder Weary. Uh, Chief Litton, any comments on that? You can really let loose. <laughs> since, since when have I ever held my tongue? <laughs> That's true. Um, I will just remind the council as they deliberate that motion that um, every single penny that's accounted for in those lines are due to a labor agreement that this council has passed in the past. That labor agreement is good through the end of next year. Um, can't couple that with federal and state laws, which basically is creating um, the need to fill the seats when they're vacant um, because of those federal and state laws and, and the labor agreement. And we've calculated that down right pretty close to the penny. And I think when you reduce it, all you're doing is setting it up for a deficit. You certainly can do anything that you want to do, but uh, our staff has taken a lot of time to account hour for hour as to what happens uh, in those lines. And when you do so, you're setting it up for a deficit. So that's, that's my comment. Okay. Thank you, Chief. If I could. Alder Burnett. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Chief, for that. And, you know, I, I respect you and your, your decision and your leadership. We've been running a deficit for a while. I mean, overtime, firefighter overtime, you know, year to date when we had the budget book was 1.38 million. If we overshoot that and we go over budget, then we'll just make a budget amendment. It's a, it's a gamble I'm willing to take. So we can adjust it if needed later in the year and just not fill other positions or, you know. Okay. I'm, you don't have to respond to that. I know we probably disagree, <laughs> but I'm willing to just reduce it a little bit. I don't want you coming back to the leadership that will be left behind when I'm gone and saying to them what happened here. Uh, no. So for, for the record, no. uh, I would oppose the motion, but uh, just because of those circumstances. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Any other comments on the motion? Questions? Seeing none, all in favor will signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay? Nay. I think we're going to have to use the board on that. Alderman Eck, how would you 
you like to be recorded? Motion failed. Any other motions? Alder Weary? Thanks. It would be revenue, page 118, similar to the one I did before. It's line 46440. It's for the uh, assessments for weed. For weeds. It was 60,000 two years ago. For this weed. year trending. Weeds. <laughs> Tall grass and weeds. Oh, yeah. Tall grass. Tall good, grass, good, folks. Good Don't get excited. <laughs> Somewhere the llama's getting all crazy. <laughs> revenue, got it. <laughs> yeah, Go ahead, Alder. No, sorry. <laughs> Threw my pen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, two years ago it was sixty thousand. Uh, this year we're budgeting forty. It's on track for forty-three. I'm looking to split the difference at fifty, so it'd be adding ten thousand to the revenue line to fifty. From forty to fifty. It's line four six four forty. Special assessments for tall grass slash weeds. Thanks, Alder. Uh, Director Grenier on that. <clears throat> I told Alder Weary, uh, we had a conversation about this this morning. I, I told him I'm rather noncommittal on it. Um, one thing I do want to remind folks is that with DPW, our service charges are not intended to be punitive. It's simply to cover cost. In an ideal world, everyone is following the ordinance and we don't have these charges. So I, I don't build my budget depending on the revenue that comes in from this thing. So just with that in mind, what I don't want, similar to what Chief just expressed some concerns about, what I don't want is to get to July and then be reminded by the Common Council, Steve, you're not coming anywhere close to the long grass and weed charge, and then be given direction to send my guys out to be the grass police around the city and then I get a bunch of complaints in from residents charging for grass collection, and the very same alders then are asking me to rescind those charges. Right. Okay. Yeah. No, Thank you for that. Appreciate that. And, yeah, we did exchange some emails. So I, yeah. um, I think meeting halfway between is fine. Adding the ten thousand. I promise I won't ask you for more weed money. <laughs> We're gonna hold you to that. Alder <laughs> Weary uh, makes a motion. Was there a second for it? Second. Second, second by Alder Brunette. Any further discussion? none all in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed nay the ayes have it and that motion succeeds other motions uh yeah hold the the turnover dpw that we had discussed earlier right i don't know the page but it's dpw 50099 page 119 yeah there we go <laughs> She's on, on the spot with everything. So, um, yep, it's it's a reduction right now of 159. And um, Pam and Diana did the math here for me and, and took those positions I mentioned. And basically, if they were held open till July 1st, you're at 113,000. April 1st, 56,000. If you just maybe take 50,000 and, and increase that budget line, then it allows the director to apply it um, as he sees fit. So I would increase that line by 50,000. Okay, is there a second for that motion? Second. Second by Alder Scannell. Uh, director Grenier, any comments on that? There's probably a good, uh, a high probability that I will be coming back to the committee sometime during the course of the year and asking for a budget amendment. Most of, these pro uh, most of these have been authorized by personnel committee and the, uh, and the common council for us to fill, uh, so they're already open to recruitments. Uh, if we're successful in getting candidates like in a tough labor market, I'm going to have a tough time turning them away. Thanks, Director. Additional comments? Um, I, I do. All the way. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go back to my list here. Uh, no, one comment, Chris, I firmly believe this budget proposal is wrong. Jacking up the budget by a large amount while we are suffering from high inflation and looking at possible recession does not make sense. Another comment, totally excessive increase. Another comment, in my opinion, it does not make sense to increase taxes to what will be, if not already, an economic downturn. I have more, but th there's a lot of reasons why. Just do our best here to hold some of those things open. Don't expect miracles, but thanks. Yeah. Alder Johnson. Yeah, thank you. Just a, a, a question, and I, I appreciate Director Grenier's explanation, and I think this question kind of broadly applies to any of these things, and we've heard 
you know, hey, we're going to have to come back to council. Don't don't hold us accountable for certain things. Or, uh, you know, my 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 broad question is, I can't recall a time we've ever done that because we don't really look at this any time throughout the year. I think that's really an administrative responsibility. So, so really, Mayor, my my question is, you know, when an account doesn't generate enough re revenue or it goes over on the expense side, uh, again, I we've seen budget amendments rarely um you know but even you know when i look at obviously oh, we all know fire overtime is over substantially this year we know why and it's a good reason but we didn't take up a budget amendment for it that every call so how do you handle that internally? yeah we yeah. we did take up some budget amendments i believe last year um and i think that is and director ellenbecker can definitely speak to it more than i could but i think it's a recommendation by auditors mm -hmm. to not really mess around with the lines and kind of stay within them so um, in recent history, we've been been good about bringing stuff back, especially when it's substantial. But Director Ellen Becker, correct. I would confirm with that. You know, be having new auditors looking for through our minutes and asking why we had it brought back some amendment resolutions when you have a the way we categorize it, it's department slash function. If you have at the end of the year, you have a function that is over budget, we should be bringing an amendment back. So last year would have been the first year we brought some back. So at this point, we would actually still wait until the end of the year to see how, in this case, police and fire are considered one function. That is how the budget was approved. So at the end of the year, police and fire would have to balance. If they're over, then we would be bringing a budget amendment back. DPW as a whole is a function. Um, so the, all his divisions are considered one. If he's not, if he, in total, he's not over, we wouldn't have to come for a budget amendment. If in total he'd be over, that's when a budget amendment would have to be brought back to the council. Okay, so it's almost kind of like a, an auditor directive to maybe shift how we've traditionally done things in the past to be a little bit more transparent, accountable, kind of in that regard. Yes. Okay, and I appreciate that. I just, for my benefit, and I'm sure others too, I just wasn't sure how that worked. But I think to Alder Weary's point, it's, it's kind of like do your best, and if it does go over, I'm happy to take up a budget amendment discussion at that time. Certainly am. Okay. And I think we'd better be prepared to support that too, if that happens. Thanks, Alder. Any other questions on the motion or comments? Seeing none, all in favor will signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Motion is successful. Additional motions? Going once. All the way. Question on the contingency, why it uh, went up 50,000. Is there a particular reason or, I mean, have we been going over? No, we've been we've been yeah. cranking it up for, you know, best yeah. best practice. I remember when it used to be 50,000. <laughs> yeah, for best practice reasons. But um, Director Allen Becker, can I expound on that? Yes, thank you. Um, again, this was a recommendation from our auditors to include our general fund policy within our budget. So it, actually our general fund policy is on page 18 and 19 of our budget book. And there is a category, there is a line on page 21-3-5. It talks that the, this is our internal policy, um, but the contingency reserve should be budgeted at a minimum of 0.5% to maximum of 1% of the general fund expenditures, any other expenditure expenditures, blah, blah, blah. Um, so what it would say is our, our expenditures of last year was 89 million. So that would say that our contingency reserve through our, our previous recommendation should be somewhere between 448,000, 879,000 is what the recommendation is, a 1% of, uh, um, of your expenditures. Two lines, three lines down, 1.4 best, 1.4-3. Point three, it's just as the finance director will be will recommend an amount to be budgeted in that account at the annual budget. So we have been, as the mayor had said, we have been tweaking it up. There was many, many years it was sitting at 110,000. We went to 150 to 200. This is taking it up to 250. Again, it's an internal policy. We have general fund policy saying that we should be somewhere between four to 800,000 based on our ex on our ex um, prior year's expenditures. That's why the recommendation was to slowly tweak this back up. Did Alder Weary support that in 2006? I'm just kidding. <laughs> 2016. 2016, this was oh, approved. <laughs> Any comments on that? Uh, no, no, thanks. I appreciate okay. it. Yep. Additional thoughts or motions? Going once. Alder Burnett. Uh, question for Director Grenier. I know last year there was a bit of a discussion on green infrastructure we we had a request to put green infrastructure 
an ARPA prior to that, I think we voted down. There was a couple different things, but I remember uh, you, you and I had corresponded, but can you just confirm that in the tax levy and the budget that is before us, is there any green infrastructure projects that are budgeted or considered currently? There are not. The only green, uh, there are not. The only green infrastructure initiatives that are moving forward right now, we are currently finishing up the construction of the Eliza Street yeah. uh, project, which was primarily funded by a grant. Um, we also brought through Improvement and Service Committee um, the award of a contract for preparing the Green Stormwater Infrastructure Master Plan for the city. Uh, that is actually 22 funds, and they are stormwater funds. They are not levy supported budget. So there is no. There is no green uh, stormwater infrastructure in the budget at this point in time. Right, and that, that's, uh, that's what you shared. So I wanted the committee to know that so that was an opportunity, if it was, uh, to go over and above gray infrastructure <clears throat> to reduce. But uh, one thing, one idea that I'm going to propose, we look at pay increases. There are a lot of positions within our organization that are you know, relatively high paid and they're obviously deserving and well qualified and perform well for the city. But I feel there's a lot of pressure on some of our laborers in the city, some positions that don't make as much as some of the higher end positions within our city government. So I'd like to make a motion to Alderman Johnson had made a recommendation to increase pay increases or to for, um, advance pay increases effective April 1st. Um, I agree with that, but what I like to do is make the pay increases effective on the first seventy thousand of a city of Green Bay uh, position. So, just to explain that, so Alderman, so uh, anyone, uh, all city employees, uh, non-union employees, anyways, will get a pay increase, <clears throat> and the the pay increase would max out at the first seventy thousand of an employee's salary. So, for example, if an employee makes $75,000, the pay increase at 3% of the 70000 of the salary would be $2,100 for prorated for nine months out of the year, that employee would get $1,575. So any, any person 70000 and above would still get over $1,500, but it's an opportunity for us to you know, save some dollars and be a little more fair with some of the pay increases that we're distributing. Okay, there is a motion. Is there a second for that? Seconded by Alder Weary. Just a question for Director Allen Becker in terms of the complexity of doing that. <laughs> We were, we were talking, one, we not sure how we'd calculate it at this moment, but I mean, we could look, look into that. I'm not sure our, currently our payroll system, salary, salary tables, it's compli it's very complex, but um, we don't wouldn't have that answer right now. It would be very complex to do that. Okay. But. Further discussion on that? Alder Johnson. Yeah, and I, I, I appreciate the motion I uh, and the sentiment behind it. Um, it doesn't really affect what we're talking about in terms of levy or mill rate or any of that, it still all goes back to the way that this was approved, which is in the ARPA bucket. Um, my, my biggest concern is, are, are we gonna spend more time trying to calculate that than what we're saving? Uh, but the other piece of it is wage compression and in recognizing then that, that, I mean, because quite frankly, folks, if you, if you talk to other municipalities, we're losing people above the $70,000 range to nearby municipalities. And, and so I don't know that this actually helps us when it comes to the personnel, the recruitment and retention. If somebody is making more than 70,000, it is because they are a highly competent, skilled professional. They all are, just in their certain areas, but typically someone above 70,000, it's a little bit more specialized, uh, a higher level of training, um, and also is more competitive. The, the labor market, right? If you need someone who's uh, a department director, your pool is a lot shallower uh, than someone who might be uh, in, in a different position. So uh, a, a park laborer is an example. All equally important, all with an immense amount of dignity in what they do. Um, but, you know, people are being compensated at different levels for, for reasons. 
Um, and and I, I just I fear the wage compression that it creates for us moving forward into future budgets and, and the way that that might impact our department heads in terms of how they recruit personnel in a highly, highly, highly competitive labor market. I mean, we've, we've heard it from Director Grenier. We've heard it from police and fire before, just how hard it is to get individuals. And if, if you've got an individual that says, you know what, I can choose between Green Bay and De Pere. De Pere pays me more. Where do you think they're going to go? And I, I, I think, and I've said this to, to, to Chief Falks, we, I think we need to do an entire evaluation of all of our pay across the board. You know, that's not going to happen now. That's not going to happen as part of this budget process. But I, I think we're almost taking a step backwards with that. Thanks, Alder. Alder Scannell, then Alder Burnett. Yeah, I would second that. And also, I'm wondering, if they go to the pier, can they still cheer for the Packers? Mm -hmm. Of course. No. You know, I mean... Alder Burnett. Yeah, Packers, you know, they... I mean, it's... It's all our problems. It's all our problems for Green Bay. Yeah. You can't go to the pier. So, Alder Burnett. Yeah. No, but... Oh, Alder Scannell, you had... We have balanced the back uh, of our budgets before on our staffs, and I... I uh, I never approved. I, I can't remember if I ever voted along. I've certainly done it with dragging my feet. And I certainly come to the spot where I, I really don't want to do that anymore. Um, this is not a way to run an organization. It's not a way to run a city. It's not a way to treat people. People should get paid what they're worth. I believe in capitalism, and uh, uh, so I, I I I don't think this is really. Helpful. I appreciate the effort, but I, I just I can't support it. Thank you. All right, Alder for a second. Well, thank time. you. I mean, tough times call for tough actions, and quite frankly, it seems like a lot of the ideas are drying up. And so, unless someone has an opportunity or an idea to reduce the budget, we're going to have to be able to get creative. You know, still increase pay for city employees. Everyone up to without up to seventy thousand gets a full three percent raise, effective April and onward. And that allows us, uh, I get compression, I truly do, but when you have some positions over $100,000 and you give a full 3% wage, and meanwhile some of the lower paid city workers who are struggling, who are working just as hard, we always say that, I mean, plow truck drivers, park employees, office workers, <coughs> maybe their pay is a little lower, maybe their pay grade's a little different, but where else are the ideas? We can't approve the budget. I. I Vote for yourselves, but I cannot approve the budget as is. And unless other people have other ideas, uh, seems like we're drying up our, our possibilities. And if we're not a little creative and how we take a take a chop at this massive tax increase, uh, we we have to do these sorts of things. So, thanks, Alder. Alder Stoyer, and then Alder Campbell. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Alder Burnett. I mean, is there a number that you'd be comfortable with? I mean, you said you, you want to support the budget as it is right now, but is there? I mean, I, I've been looking at the salary raises as well, three percent, and if you reduced it to two and a half percent, you'd save thirty-two thousand five hundred dollars. If you reduced it to two percent raise, it'd be sixty-five thousand. You know, like I said, you have to kind of weigh the. The savings that you're getting there versus morale, that's one thing. And I do appreciate the sentiment of, you know, the higher salaried employees are making more with their raise. But as Alder Johnson said, it's a smaller pool too. So it's a, it's a tough one. It really is. And I, you know, you could just vote completely against the budget. You know, I... I would have proposed to maybe reduce it to two and a half percent and save thirty-two thousand five hundred dollars. But to me, that's is that a really large amount, you know, for morale. So I'm a little, I have a little tougher time on that one. So that's all I've got. I'm not gonna probably won't support it. Thanks, Holder. And just just a question, I guess, again for Director Allen Becker, are, is it even feasible to get a calculation on what this could approximately be? I mean, it, it just seems sort of difficult to, to book this. I guess, we would ha <clears throat> I guess we'd have to determine how many people were that are within our pay plan that would be over 70,000. And then we would have to, I think if you said the maximum is 3% for 70,000, that like you said, it's $2,100. Um, I, I guess it would, it would just take some time for us to calculate it. Right. So, I just don't know how. Yeah. So we have salary tables. Go ahead, Treasurer Manley. Kind of. 
you know, our, our pay plan right now is set on the salary table, and so people are set on steps, right? One, two, right. three. So if then there's seven steps still, I don't know how we take some of those steps and give them a 3% increase, and some we only give an increase on the first 70,000. It's changing all those steps completely, I guess. Yeah. It's easier in the performance range, but those steps part. Sure. Okay. Alder Burnett. Yeah, I proposed the impossible math equation for the accountants, if you're, and I, I do respect that. I know when I was going through the budget, again, I'm just coming up with ideas. It doesn't mean that you all have to support it. it doesn't mean that I think it's the best idea, but it's something. I looked at the budget book, and you know, we have positions 71,000, 138, 100. There are a lot, and I stopped writing at, at the police department because it got to be rather redundant. I was trying to figure it out. But so I, I guess the question before us now, unless some other council members or the administration has ideas to cut the budget, uh, perhaps we kind of put this on the department heads and say, you know, department by department, what are your suggestions to perhaps reduce any levy supported? budget for your department by 5% or 10%, what would you do that the council could consider? Because I, I can't support the, the budget as it stands now. And um, I'm willing to propose some more things, but if we're going to get resistance, then um, I don't know where we go with this. So perhaps Mayor could, could I'll withdraw the motion because it's going to be difficult to figure out. So I'll withdraw the motion, but I'd like to then make another motion. Well, Tell you what, I'll withdraw the motion and we'll worry about what comes after that. You have to make a motion to withdraw. I motion think. to withdraw, please. Right. Motion to withdraw made by Alder Burnett, seconded by Alder Scannell. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Alder Eck. Um, I, I think I, I like the, the route you were going. And the reason I like that is because then it does give the directors of the departments the opportunity to look through and see where they can reduce it because we we don't know how all of the inner workings of the departments and for us to go line by line and try to reduce it um, it's difficult and I agree I cannot pass the budget as is because um, as we're sitting here even we're getting we're getting more messages saying please don't pass the budget um, so our constituents are talking to us saying right now is just not the time to raise it as much as it is so um, I would um, agree that putting it back on the the direct the directors to look at it and reduce it by five percent in each d department that is a, a very large number <laughs> just put it Alder on Johnson there. Um, thank you mayor it, you know I think one of the thing just maybe a point of information I guess could could we get an explanation in terms of when this body is required to pass this budget. I believe it's November 14th. Oh, the Director Allenbecker or uh, Attorney Bunger? There isn't a date specific, but it's recommended. It has to be done before property tax bills are printed. So it's usually mid mid November, end of November is like, but November 14th is for, um, municipalities that operate under a different set of uh, budget laws and we are we adopted 65.90 which doesn't give a date specific but in in theory it has to be done by mid november in time for the property tax bills to be put together okay. and sent okay. out in time so really soon correct <laughs> yes and that's really all i needed to know so so here's my point we've got i mean i don't know i've i've proposed and passed three quarters of a million dollars worth of expenses today we can't just sit here in a standoff and not pass the budget. We need ideas. We need real ideas. And I get like we want to cut 500 here, 1,000 there. <laughs> Folks, this is, what's the gap? Millions? I mean, I, I just, I, you know, when I'm asking that, you know, facetiously, but if, if, if there, we need to get to enough votes to pass this budget. That is the reality today. So if we're not where we need to be, we need to have really tangible uh, amendments. Alder, uh, Alder Weir. Thank you. Might not be a tangible amendment, but it's one I <laughs> forgot. <laughs> it's on page 154, line 52001, training and travel. <clears throat> and this line is currently proposed at 213,000. In 2019, it was 136,000, then it went to 192, then 119, then back to 190. 
and, and I know in there, you know, obviously it was COVID, but not that long ago it was 136,000. I'm just recommending it stay flat from last year, 190. So that'd be a, a savings of 23,000. Sorry, Alder, what page is that, 190? Uh, 154. 154. 52001, training and travel. And, and this is by all departments, so then administration can determine where it's needed the most. And, and we're just holding it flat from last year, which is still the most it's been, you know, in quite a while, so. Okay. Um, second. The motion by Alder Weary. It would be 190,000, so. Motion by Alder Weary, seconded by Alder Johnson. Discussion among Alders or senior staff? Reducing 23,000. Director Grenier. Just keeping it flat. I can appreciate the sentiment from the alders saying that gives the director discretion, but it doesn't give the directors discretion. What you've done is you've hand, handcuffed the directors and now we're in direct competition with each other. Training and travel budget, I, I had a similar conversation with Alder Weir earlier today. In 2021's budget, we significantly reduced our training and travel budgets because COVID was going on and most training and travel was being done virtually. In 2022, most of the directors came back with significant budget increases to restore funding to pre-COVID numbers, and collectively as a group, we agreed to kind of hold the line and only bring half of that increase back in the hopes that maybe a lot more of that training and travel was gonna continue in a virtual environment. What we found throughout 2021 and 2022 is that's not the case. Not only is the training back to in-person because there's a certain value of human contact in this training. But as cost escalation has gone up, the cost of the conference is necessary for us to, to maintain professional licensure, or we're traveling more for these types of conferences, the, the costs continue to escalate. So I, again, I can appreciate what you're trying to do, but the reality is all you're gonna do is put us into competition with each other and somebody's gonna lose out. It, th there's, no, a, there's no way for us to find a way we can't do more with less, we can do less with less. So at some point, if you're talking about making meaningful changes, you're talking about things on the hundreds of thousands of dollars or potentially in the millions of dollars, okay? It was suggested that turn it back to the departments and let them figure it out. My personal opinion as a department head, I think that's a little bit of an abdication of responsibility on behalf of the Common Council. If you guys wanna make those cuts, you need to decide what programs you're willing to sacrifice because from my department $17 million worth of tax levy impact I can't deliver you want me to reduce my expenses by 5% I can't deliver my programs I can't I told you at the at the Joint Personnel Finance Committee meeting I have shaved my budget to the bone I've given you everything that I can at the minimal cost I don't have anything left to give so if you're looking for ideas you're gonna have to decide what program you want to cut Director, uh, uh, Chief Davis. Yeah, particularly on the topic of training, I would echo Director Grenier, and I will tell you that a really good way for you to have really big problems in your police department is to cut training budgets. Uh, and I will always advocate very strongly against cutting police training. Uh, if you look at organizations around the country that have gotten consent decrees or other very expensive forms of outside uh, input to their organizations, a lot of times you will find inadequate training in those organizations. And so I, I cannot caution you in strong enough terms against cutting police training. Thanks, Chief. Alder Story, then Alder Weary. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, <laughs> I think one of the issues that we as uh, council members deal with, and you know, we get the budget, like all the worries said, we get it you know, a couple of weeks ago. We don't have a whole lot of time to look at it. We go to the meetings, we talk to department heads, we talk to our citizens, and the citizens, we, we answer to the citizens. So that, that's the bottom line. Um, and I, <laughs> we could go through every one of these line items here tonight, and we'd probably get pushback on 85 to 90 percent of them. I've just heard the tenor tonight, um, and you know, I think we'd all like to see something pass. I understand that, but like I said, the bottom line is 
you know, the, the citizens are the ones talking to us. And I, you know, some of the alders are bringing things forward. I think it's a very good thing. Um, and it's 20,000 here, 15,000 there. But I think what happens is like, well, if you do that, then everything falls apart. And the difficult thing for me, and I've been on doing this for 11 years, it's still difficult because you know, you can look at every line item and figure out, can I cut a little here, a little there? We did the old thing where we would take, you know, 500 here and 1,000 there, and you might save a penny, you know, over a long period of time. But it's the perception. The citizens are saying, hey, they're making an effort. I don't know. I, I feel like there has been some effort tonight. Is it perfect? I don't, I don't think so. But I think the effort has been made. But that's the challenge. And I, I would love to be brought into this process a lot earlier where we could talk to the department heads we could talk to the mayor we could get in earlier so that we wouldn't have these contentious moments now it's frustrating there's a, it's, we, we spend a lot of time on this so I'm off my hill thanks Alder we're on my hill uh, what are we on? That's all the way and then Alder Campbell you know I, we're actually as a council forced into this by a bad process I know a lot of us have talked about this in the past this needs to start earlier and it does for the administration they talk about it all year how they want to kind of craft it, how it's rolling how they're going to present it to us the time we get it we're in a real small box and when you have new people too you don't know what you don't know you know it's very difficult I remember being there and having no clue <laughs> no idea um, so for a very brief time when I was on council there was a good budget process and it was for two years I think it was when uh, a certain mayor's chief of staff came to our house month, two months, three months ahead of time and said, what would you like to see? Here's what we're looking to do. Here's what we want to craft it. And we had a good budget. Now, you probably aren't going to like to hear it, but it was Chad Weininger. He was the, the mayor's chief of staff. He came to my house. He came to our houses, sat down, went through the budget, and we crafted a good budget together. That's what's missing here because this is a result of a bad process this pitting departments against each other and picking at little stuff. Well, we could go big. I know I like the idea, like we did with Sam Hanlon, send it back, bring us something better, and we might get to that tonight. We have time. Heck with the county. They can wait a week. They can wait two weeks. What are they going to do, not send out the tax bills? We got time. So it's a bad process that needs to get better, you know. We're trying to pick at it, yeah, and as far as the training and travel, yeah, I get it. It's important, you know. 2019 was $136,000. That wasn't a COVID year. Oh, my God, how do we survive? Now we're asking for 90000 more. I, I, I could read you plenty more comments. Uh, you know, I, I stopped at some point here. Uh, the increase seems to be quite large and doubt if much thought was given to holding the increase down, especially with the out-of-control inflation we have. Next one says leave as is. Uh, here we go. I think the city should have to cut just like we do at home during economic hardships. This one, I can't repeat the comments, and I even just put that on there because it was a little too risque. But that's all I have for now. So, Alder Campbell? Uh, I just want to piggyback on that. As far as timing goes on this, I think I understand. I think we have a great staff here. But I'm going to go back to when I, before I got elected, and we sit down, I'm not even sworn in, and I get a computer thrown in my face, and I think it was how long? A month and a half before we had any training whatsoever. Okay, why? Did we know what we're doing? Did we pass some things? Did I look at some things that I passed that I wish I wouldn't have? Absolutely, because I hardly had any time. We don't get the budget till Friday. We got the weekend, oh, it's that handy, you know? How can we dig into this? Well, I think the first one was 280 pages. Our first meeting, we weren't even sworn in. This is another example. It says proposed budget by Mayor Eric Genrich. Doesn't say us, it's thrown at us to get our sticks out and whittle it off. How are we supposed to do it? There's no, say there's no room on it. There's no time. There's no time to look at it. There's no time. We have to rely on each other a little bit just to learn a, bit, a little bit from each other. But hey, we're not supposed to. We're not supposed to talk to each other. Oh, well, who do you talk to? You just compare everything that everyone on the outside is telling you. It's frustrating. It's, it's far less than what I signed up for. Is it a team effort? People say don't, play, don't get caught up in the politics. Friends of Bay Beach, don't get caught up in the politics. 
I'm just trying to do my job. I'm not trying to play politics. This is politics. Handing us stuff how many days before, at how many pages, 280 pages the first time. Did we make some mistake? Absolutely made some mistake. Did I hear about it from my constituents and other people that are in this crowd right here? Absolutely. I feel like it's my fault, but did I have the time to do it? You know what, there's two things in my business. You either have money or you have time. I don't know which one's more valuable. To me right now, to be pass a fair budget and work with the staff and not put a muck at, you're putting it up against us. This is irritating. I'm doing the best job I can to understand it all. I can only apply what I've learned to it and try to, try to do what I can here. And I just think everything has to be, you throw it at us from Friday, from a 13 page deal to look at over the weekend. What, we don't have lives to live neither? We're out trying to talk to our constituents because that's the only time we got. Some of us have jobs, we're not all retired. Some of us have businesses. Luckily, I can do this in my spare time, but I ain't got some spare time. I wish I had more money than time, okay? But I don't. And neither do our constituents. And if we keep passing this budget with hardly any time to tear it down, line item by line item, like I said, probably ain't gonna happen. Can we carve off $3 million off of it, which it would be acceptable to me, half? I don't know how we do it. How do we get here? Alder Grant down there. Let's look at the core problem of how we got here, not how to how are we gonna fix it, how are we gonna get a band-aid on it. That's all I have. I just don't put it on us to make a how many week decision here with zero training, zero legal advice. I appreciate the frustration, Alder, but this is not a process right that, that I invented. And this is what you said. I know, but for. your name is on the front of it. And it's That's been thrown. It's, it's the budget I proposed. I know. It's our city budget. <laughs> That's how that goes. Yeah. Alder Burnett. Yeah, I just want to turn down the temperature a little bit here. Um, it, it is a process. I will not for one second allow a department head to go unchallenged that we're abdicating our responsibility as a council. That is a ludicrous statement. I, do, I reject that in its entirety. There are tough decisions being made, tough decisions that need to be made. We are here representing the city of Green Bay in our official capacity, but let's not forget the people who put us here in these seats. It's the people of this city. And quite frankly, the people in my district are hard hit with assessments to the point that they're gonna be paying 200, 500, 1,000, even more in increased city taxes as proposed by this current budget, even with our reductions we made. It is still a rather substantial tax increase. I guess my question for, uh, first of all, there's a motion on the floor. So uh, Mr. Mayor, I'll do respect if I need, if, if you want to settle that first before we go into the next thing. Sure, and this is on training and travel reduction of, what was it, Alder Weary? It's about to 190, keeping it even. Okay. And there was a second, I think, by Alder Johnson, maybe? Mm -hmm. All right, any further discussion on discussion. Alder Scannell? Yeah, I, I appreciate wanting to reduce the budget, but I really, you know, nickel and diming, it doesn't add up. We're not going to make any big difference. If, if we're going to make a big difference, we're going to have to cut. And, you know, our constituents say, sure, they don't want high taxes. But then we make a big cut, and they're not going to, and they're going to say, where's the service? You know, I, they don't have the responsibilities they, we have. They don't have the knowledge we have. Of course they're crying about taxes. No one likes to pay taxes. But in assessments, as far as the assessments go, we've been lucky. These assessments should have been done years ago. Uh, our constituents should have been paying more taxes for years now. So this is the hit. And it's a hit, and it hurts. And to be fiscally responsible, you take the hit, and you. our job is to provide services. That's government. You're having problem with this process. Part of the problem is you're going at the process backwards. Staff and the mayor look at what do we need? How do we provide the services? And that's what they put together under uh, a blanket of uh, expenditure restraint. You're looking at it as from the top end. Well, we're not going to accept this money. Well, OK, what services are you going to do without? That's the bottom line. 
And we got all, got the books here, and some of us more experienced ones. You know, we know where the expenditures are. Where where, where are you going to cut? Where's your book? So uh, I'm just not into the nickel and diming. It never adds up to much. Um, and I, I think we've made some cuts here. I'm sorry you can't. Some of you can't uh, aren't happy with uh, that. That ain't deep enough. I, I don't know how you're going to get deeper. I just don't know how you're going to get deeper unless you're going to get really hurt the city with your services. And then that that's not only, again, we talk about growth. Who's going to come to a city that doesn't offer the services the third largest city in the state should be offering? You know, the, the, taxes are paying our bills. It's irresponsible not to pay our bills. It's irresponsible not to provide the services we should be providing. Does it hurt? Yeah, especially time, when times are tough, it hurts. But that doesn't uh, abnegate our, our responsibilities. Are we going to be responsible, or are we just going to what? That that that's what's on your plate. What? So uh, I don't support the motion because it, my in my experience, it just it isn't going to add up enough. I appreciate the effort. It just doesn't add up enough, and it just squeezes our staff. And for what? For a penny? It, 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 I, I, I think our staff deserves better. Thank you. Thanks, Holder. So we have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor will signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay? Nay. No. The nays appear to have it. Alden Burnett? Yeah, uh, Director Ellen Becker, uh, Assistant Director Manley, could you give us a status? Where are we at right now? How much have we reduced the levy in actual dollars? to 768 um, what does that look like I mean like give us a real world application like uh, average house of two hundred thousand dollars that was assessed at three hundred thousand dollars what what would that look like as far as a budget increase because 50 thousand fifty percent assessment is not out of the ordinary on an average and there are plenty that are above average that's a law of averages so thank you for that so we're, we're moving in the right direction uh, one thing that I just want to make sure we're clear on the sheet that we got from the mayor when we met uh, said that the maximum amount so the total lev levy at this preliminary budget we went from about 58 million to about 64 million uh, can you tell us with everything we have done so far how much has the levy increased from what was last year versus what is this coming year oh sorry so the last year's levy was 58 million 514 we are now proposed at a 63 262 942 and the difference, the increase is right now $5.2 million increase. $5.2 million. Okay, so earlier, uh, Alder Eck made the suggestion based off of what I said that we would uh, ask the department heads for a 5% reduction. I, I do not think she meant a 5% reduction in the total budget because that would be a well over a $5 million mm -hmm. cut. But a 5% cut on $5.2 million would be about two hundred and sixty thousand dollars give or take right so the current the levy increase is about five point two million five percent of five point two million would be about what like 260 my my right okay good so so 
if we, I'm just proposing this as a suggestion, not necessarily making a motion, but if we were to, you know, make a motion to refer to department heads and the mayor and the administration, whether tonight or at a future meeting, we'll reconvene and say, hey, you know, you know your budgets, you know your departments, you know your demands, you know what you're willing to do. Why don't you propose what your budget will look like with a 5% reduction in your levy? a 10% reduction, then a 15% reduction. It gives us something to go on. And I'm not afraid to make tough cuts and tough mm -hmm. recommendations. And Alder, Steve, uh, Alder Campbell, I think you're frustrated, and that shows, and I think department heads are frustrated probably with what I'm saying. That shows the public's frustrated, everyone's frustrated, but we cannot pass this massive tax increase of over $5 million. I think it's acceptable to do a few million, the real reality is that expenses have gone up, fuel, cities' expenses were just like any other entity, but let's just remember that the private resident, the taxpayers of this city, they're facing this expense in their private budget. Their expenses have gone up, their fuel, their energy, their food, their gasoline to fill their car, heating, WPS is considering. A f so they are forced to make a lot of really difficult cuts in their personal budget. And they expect this, uh, I'm sorry, there, Mayor, could you, there's just some, I don't mean to be rude. If, if they want to open, I'll open the floor if we want to hear from them, but it's a little distracting. I'll do it now, go ahead. Um, so our, Taxpayers, the people who we represent, are making tough cuts in their personal budget, and they expect us to do the same. So that we don't, then they're going to have to make those tough cuts and expenses and added added uh, costs in their personal budget. And then they're going to have to pay for their city government, who's not seemingly willing to make some more tough cuts. So that's what I would recommend. But at some point, unless someone has any other ideas, I think we should call the question, vote on the budget as it is, and then if it fails, then we know what we're working with. Any other, uh, Alder Hutchison? Yeah, it's my first budget. Uh, interesting. <clears throat> That's a uh, word. Because everything the president just said is true because we all live in our own houses or we rent or whatever, and we all know the, the pain that we're all going through. We're all taxpayers. So we're all on the same team. What I see, though, having grown up uh, through this, I was a civil engineer, young civil engineer working for the city of West Bend, and then I left and, and went other places. But what I see happening right here is we have a tough time, and we're all in pain, and yet we want the city to function in a way that doesn't further make people angry. And people like with the leaf pickup, our, our city does a great job. Uh, there's other things they do, water department fixing these frozen pipes, great job. There's a lot that goes on, okay? And this is, mo those were civil, but that's civil engineer, that's what I was. But um, this, this takes planning, it takes equipment, it takes the things we already have in place. And what I see happening now we're kind of down there. We're down to the bones. So if we want to keep cutting, we are going to have to cut services. And it would probably be, and I hate this, we should pick a service and cut it. We're, we're to that point. And people are not going to like that. Like right now, I don't see a lot of road building going on due to the fact we're not increasing our road budget, which we should do. We're not doing it. There's a lot that we're not doing, and, it, and that's not getting credit here. It should, we should have a lot more money going to different places. We aren't. We're not even considering it. It's off the table already. And so what people are complaining about is what's left. And we, I think, have to be grown up and see what we got left and make adult decisions that don't necessarily jive with the words we want to tell our, our people. I tried to cut the budget. Look at my words, what I said during the council meeting. I said we should delete this and this and this. And let me say it again in 10 times. It can get in the newspaper. That's great, because we're cutting, cutting, cutting. But when you come to the end of the day, 
that doesn't really do anything. The city is the city. It has the things that they have because we budgeted it. That's a tough row to hoe. I'm willing to do it. I'm willing to vote for a budget, but I'm not willing to really cut into the services we really provide, and we're there. We're really there. There's no, I don't see any gravy on this thing. And I'm paying. I'm in pain because I'm going to pay a lot more money for property tax myself. And I know people are in pain on this. That's just a fact of life. We just got to make a call. And I think we better make the right call. Because otherwise, we're just, it's going to get worse. If we make cut too much, that's not good either. So I'm just asking for, look at the big picture. We're here. We could be, it could be a lot worse. The numbers could be a lot higher. They're not. They're right where they're at. So we've heard everything saying cut, 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 cut. No one stood up and say, let's increase. There hasn't been one word about let's increase. But we can't cut so, so far. That's just uh, what I have to say. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Johnson. Page 9, your budget book. It's pie chart. Insurance, 2%. Insurance is what it is. We can't change it. Capital equipment, 1%. You're not going to make up $3 million there. Debt service has to be paid. Debt service general levy has to be paid. Transit has to be paid, 1%. Human resources, 1%. You're not going to make $3 million there. Community ED, 3%. Law, 1%. You're not going to make up $3 million there. Parks and Rec, 8%. All right. What are you going to cut? What parks are you going to close? What pools are you going to close? Public works, 16 percent. All right. Which roads are we not going to do? We're going to stop picking up leaves. We're going to stop picking up trash. Police department. Who's got the courage? 24 percent. Who's got the courage to say that we are not going to protect our community? Admin services, 2 percent. Mayor, 0%. Council, 0%. Fire in Alloway, 3%. Can't cut it. We have an intergovernmental agreement there that protects that. Fire department, 19%. Again, who's got the courage to cut the fire department? If you want to cut $3 million, the place you're going to do it is parks, public works, police department, and fire department. When you look at this pie chart, not all of it is even subject to possible cuts. Those are your four departments where you are going to make up cuts. Where are the proposals? I'm not making them because I don't think we ought to do it. But I'm also willing to make a very difficult decision to pass a budget that I don't like. And it's not that I don't like the proposal that's put in front of us. I don't like having to raise taxes either. But do you know why our expenditure restraint is high? Inflation. We don't have to like that either, but the reality is that's why the expenditure restraint was higher, right? I mean, they're using the index. That's what creates the expenditure restraint. That means our costs went up. That means it costs more for labor. It costs more for equipment. How many times have we seen this council make decisions to order equipment because things were on back order? Supplies were more expensive. If we don't make this decision now, it's going to cost us more. Fuck, we're, we're subject to it too. So the, real, the reality is, folks, again, fire, police, roads, parks. Those are the core responsibilities that we talk about as a government entity that we need to take care of. That's what our public demands. We talk about speeding all the time. Then we're going to cut our traffic enforcement officers. I don't know. That's the call I get the most. I'm not cutting that one. We talk about the exceptional service we get from our fire department. Any delay in service. And we've heard this before from the chief talk to us about this when one of the ambulances was proposed to be cut in a previous budget. And we understood and we learned as a council what that means in terms of delayed response. I'm not ready to, to make those sacrifices. Parks, we've all had that question, why can't we get the pools open? Why aren't the parking programs where they need to be? I, I represent a very low income area. 
Those kids need that. That's not a want. That's a need. I appreciate Alder Burnett's point that maybe we just need to call the question and see where the votes lie, and then we're, you know, what's what's the next response to that? But, you know, I don't I don't like calling the question, so I'm not going to do it because in case somebody else wants to respond to what I just said, and I saw both of you guys taking notes, so I expect something here. But look, folks, even when you look at this pie chart and you look at these percentages, these percentages you add them up, and they're even more because of all the other categories that we cannot touch. Thanks, Alder. Alder Weary. Mr. Mayor. Can't disagree with that. It, the budget is what it is, and there's only so many places you can, can tweak it. So that's a well put forward. Um, it's not all or nothing, right? You know, there's, there's, we need to knock that off. It's not all or nothing. There's a lot of in between. A lot you know we're not down to the bone believe me I've been through 16 years of Jim Schmidt God bless him for all his intricacies he did a good budget he was a good budgeter now did he t cut too tight sometimes certainly but over the past four years the total budget has gone up 17 million that's 14 and a half percent over the previous 14 years it went up 13 million 14 percent Going back, you know, the increases were 2%, 1%, 2, down 3%, 0.5, 1%, 3%, down 1, 2, 1, down 0.1. That's what it was before. Now the budget's gone up. This is the total budget, 2.2%, 2.6%, 3.09%, and I think now we're at 6%. So a lot has grown in the budget. Don't tell me there's not bloat. Don't tell me that. I don't believe it. But it doesn't necessarily have to be our job to find it. That's what Schmidt did good, did a good job at, is making the department heads and everybody bring us a budget that fit. Because otherwise we end up with this. You know, I take my job seriously, and I hope everybody does too. I'm very passionate about it, if you couldn't tell. And this bleeping GD budget, honest to God, gave me a migraine. I missed work yesterday. So sorry work, but I've never had a migraine. I had one yesterday. I was out of work all day long. I was out of commission because of this stupid thing. I take it so passionately. I care about it. That's all I have for now. Holy Burnett. Yeah, yeah, again, and all their, I agree, everything you said. Uh, but I think that, I think what I'm suggesting is a little misunderstood. If we were to look at the total levy of $64 million, again, levy for the newer members, I'm not trying to talk down to you, but that's the taxes that we collect. That's the levy. That's what we assess to the taxpayers of the city. Tax levy, as proposed in the mayor's budget that we got this document, it was, say, give or take $64 million. If we were to say cut 5% of that, that would be, you know, $3 million, 10% of that would be six, but that would be draconian. That would be excessive. I don't even know where department heads would do that. But all I'm suggesting is a reduction on the increase of the levy. So if the increase was about 58 million, this year mayor's proposal, again, going off of this, not necessarily the budget book, but the tax levy went up 10 or 11%, reduce that. So really the, the increase is about six million dollars this council did a prudent thing a responsible thing and we reduced it to 5.2 million we're still levying 5.2 million more than we did last year so on that 5.2 million if we were to increase that levy number by three percent or five percent that's two hundred and sixty thousand dollars if it's ten percent that's five hundred and twenty thousand fifteen would be seven hundred and eighty and if we were to find a way to cut 20% of the levy of 5.2 million, that would only be $1 million, $1,040,000. The department heads can figure that out. Otherwise, we're gonna have this like, oh, you're gonna cut the, I can make those suggestions, but they know the departments. They know the demands, they know the pressures that we're under. Do not for a second council, especially the newer members, don't buy into this argument that it's all like, oh my gosh, you're, you're gonna cut to the bone. We are not. We're asking for this to be sent back potentially, because it does pass, I didn't even make the motion, 
let the department heads tell us if we were to cut it, our department budget by 5%, this is what it would look like. 10%, this is what it would look like. 15, it's okay. I mean, that's kind of their job. I'm not trying to sound condescending, but we pay them very well. We compensate them fairly. They're highly qualified. They've been doing this. They're all professionally trained, certified in their particular areas. They can find a 5%, 10%, 15 or 20% proposed reduction in the levy increase not the total levy that would be ridiculous I, I would never want them to go through that exercise it would be futile it would be messed up and cruel and not necessary but on the increase the increase of 5.2 million if you had to cut 10% five five hundred and twenty thousand dollars what would that look like give us some options I think that that is completely appropriate don't buy into the We've all been melodramatic on both sides. Let's be real. That's what we do. That's government. That's politics. We respect each other. Hopefully after this, we all can look each other in the eye with respect and extend handshakes. These are tough, but we're voted in to make the tough decision. The department heads are hired to make these tough decisions. The mayor is elected to make tough decisions. Let's spread it around a little bit. We made some cuts here as a council. We did our job so far. We did a million dollars in cuts. Let's, let's kind of put it back on them and try to get them to match that. I think that's fair. Give us options. Thanks, Alder. Uh, Alder Grant and Alder Eck. I just want to put in reality what this increase does. I had a resident contact me yesterday to get an estimate of what his increase was. Um, he has two commercial properties in a, his house. Collectively, his taxes were gonna increase $11,000. By the third estimate, I had to pause because it was hard for me to give him that news. And I know people think my district and Alder Burnett's district got hit the hardest, but you're being naive if you think this isn't gonna affect the renters. We talk about growing the city, how are we gonna grow it if people are gonna leave because they can't afford to live here? This isn't just homeowners, this is business owners. This is affecting everyone. And it's not just my district. I had another constituent who's not in my district reach out to me. Her property went from 100000 to 200000 so not even that high of a <laughs> overall price. $1,300 she's going to have to come up with in a month. This is the reality we're facing. So I just want real numbers thrown out there so people understand that it's not just my district or Alder Brunette's district. This is everywhere. This is renters. Um, yeah, so I, um, I it, it is, there's inflation, um, but it's coupled with a reassessment that was done. Bec and I know that it was driven, you know, with housing, the housing market going crazy, but we all know that cannot sustain. It's going to go down. Um, and with the inflation, people, they can't afford this. They can't afford those ra the, the raises in their taxes. Um, when I said to put it back to the, to the department heads, it was more out of respect for them in knowing their department. Um, and yeah, I don't want to be draconian. I, was, I used that number because you threw out 5%. So I'm not blaming on you. No, I'm no, just, you know, I put that out there. But what I'm saying is I don't want to make those decisions for them, not because um, I'm trying to put it on them and, and, you know, not take responsibility, but it's out of respect for what they do. That, I just want to make that clear. Any other comments? Alder Scam? Just a quick one. I, I think if you kick this back to staff and they make the cuts, it's going to be with services. We're going to lose services. So they're going to come back and say, you're going to lose this service and you're going to save this much. And I think we're back right where we are, square one, because we could do the same thing. We could do right now and say, what service do we want to do away with and make the cut? So, uh, you know, did you just say they're going to say, oh, they made the cuts and it, it didn't matter. I think <laughs> that is naive. They, they, anything they come back with, it's going to be a cut in services. And we should know what those services are. What we're going to be, we should be knowing what we're uh, uh, saving and what we're losing. What we're saving in money and what we're losing in service. Um, and I just don't think I just think we're just back to square one. We're right where we are right now because we could do that right now. 
think of, think of a service. Well, let's pick out some parks. What parks do we want to close? What uh, do we want to do? Uh, uh, garbage pickup uh, every other week, once a month. What do we? I mean, think of a service and reduce it. No, it's not falling. It's it's a fact. We got. Well, I just I think. Yes, there's no fat here. There's no. I, I don't think there's fat at all. Uh, that the staff res view their job responsibly. They see they they see themselves as servants providing a service. They look at the services and they try to provide them, and then they come. That's the budget we get. They're not they're not taking vacations to Florida on this. I mean, what are you talking about? So. Uh, I just don't see kicking it back to staff is going to make much of a difference. We're still going to be making the hard choices of what service you're going to cut. To to so, yeah. yeah, well. Alder Weary. Take advice from Mr. Alder, Alder Scandal has the floor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Well, I. I yeah, I, yes, Alder Weary. I did. Alder Weary. Yes. Alder Scandal has the floor. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm just Yo, really? I'm way I'm way yeah, you're way behind, all right. Way behind. Uh, on anything that's factual. There we go. <laughs> Boom. And with that, I'll sign off. Okay. Thank you, Alder. All right, we don't need a motion on this item, so we can move along to resolutions at this time if there are no further motions on the budget. All right, on to resolutions. Entertain a motion to suspend the rules on the first two. Motion to suspend the rules on resolution one and two. Second. Motion has been made to suspend the rules and take up uh, resolutions one and two with one roll call vote. It was made by Alder Scannell and seconded by Alder Johnson. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 No. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Approve. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell. Second. Seconded by Alder Weary. And we will use the board. Approved 12 or 11 0 rather. Uh, resolution R3. Motion to J3. approve. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell. Thanks. Second by Alder Weary. Any more discussion on the resolution? What can I? There's been a lot. Alder Burnett. This is the resolution approving the budget? Yes. No, you second that, Weary? Second. No. No. Weary, what's going on? Oh. All right, Alder Scannell uh, made a motion to approve. Second. Seconded by Elder Johnson. Still more comments, huh? Yeah, definitely. Elder Burnett, We're ahead. not done, guys uh, and ladies. Vote this down. Let's get the taxpayers of this city a, a budget that they can accept. Our work is not done, so vote this down and let's roll up our sleeves. Thank you. Elder Thank you. I'm going to go back to some more of my comments. I mean, there were some for it. Um, I agree with the increase. I approve the budget. 6.9% increase seems reasonable to me. Um, what else? I agree with the increase. The proposed budget seems solid to me. I think that's about all of them. Then we go to swear to God, Green Bay is leaving more and more to be desired. People are going to start moving this way if bleep is going. Uh, does, this, does our opinion even matter at all? Uh, I voted for Genrich, but now I'll vote for anybody but Genrich. The only thing that he seems to accomplish is charging us more for everything. It's Genrich, just heads up. Okay. <laughs> I must have spelled it wrong. And people like me living on a fixed income are having a hard time making ends meet. I don't want to have to get aid from the government. Property tax increase is going to hurt me bad. This latest increase in spending is alarming and fiscally irresponsible. How sad that I am retired and on a fixed income and I have to go back to work to make up for the increase. Um, I know for a fact that my district by Lambeau is being affected. 
because a lot of those really nice houses now are affecting everything around it. So you have some retired couples who built their houses 40 years ago. Their property has tripled in value, and, and their taxes have gone bananas. And, and they don't want to sell. They just want to retire there, but they're on fixed income. So definitely affects my district. So there, we did some good things here tonight, but not, not enough. So I can't support it. All right, thanks, Alder. Additional comments? Yeah, just one. Alder Scannell. Just one more reminder that I meant to mention before that we always seem to forget. This budget, our levy, is comparable to other municipalities our size. We are not exorbitant. We are not crazy here. We're right in the middle. We are fiscally responsible. So I mean, this is tough. Every budget's tough. I mean, I, I, every year I hear the time isn't right for this, the time isn't right for that. That's every year. Every year I hear from certain alders and certain constituents, no taxes. I mean, that's every year. Uh, this year, I agree, it's very tough because of inflation, because of the assessments. Those assessments should have been done years ago. And, and when they, if they had been done years ago, that year that they would have been done, we'd be going through this, the alders would have been going through this with Constituent screaming is just too much. I mean, I, I appreciate that, but we have to be responsible. This is, this is the way it is. Unless you want to do away with some uh, considerable services. I don't see how we're going to do anything else. So, thank you. So, Alder, Alder Story, you're already trying to relive this meeting? Or what's going on there? You know what? I hit a button on it. Additional comments? Alder Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. Just two things. One is, um, if the votes aren't there for this, and I don't know what will happen here, we're going to take the vote and we'll see. What's the number? What's the number? We have a constitutional responsibility to pass this budget. What's it going to take? We were elected to do this. And so if this isn't going to be it for you, for those who may vote no, I, I hope we're ready to talk about real solutions. And the second thing that I would point out, because there's been a lot of talk about it, and that's revaluations, and I get it, right? It, it impacted people in different ways, but the reality is when you're talking about the types of increases you're talking, the revaluation, I mean, if, if your property taxes are going up that much, it means you've been underpaying for a lot of years because it is a redistribution that the state requires that is not subject to local authority. So, it, and I feel for those people, I do, but it also means that folks in my neighborhood have been overpaying for many years. So it's, uh, we have to figure this out. I'm not leaving here today until we do. Thank you, Alder. Any final comments? All right, seeing none, um, we will use the board. And that fails seven to four. Mayor, can we take a couple minute break? Sure. Let we folks think about what cuts they're going to propose. We can take a recess for 10 minutes. I will call the council back to order. Alder Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, there's, there's been a lot of discussion tonight. Something that I heard from a few folks is that we didn't have enough time to look at the budget. Uh, we want staff to contemplate some additional adjustments. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of new or additional ideas forthcoming. So because of that, I'm going to make a motion to adjourn until Monday at 6 o'clock. That gives everybody on this body an additional four days, including the weekend. What's that? We'll worry about that later. I'm making the motion. We'll see where it falls. Uh, but I'm making the motion to adjourn until 6 o'clock on Monday so that everybody can contemplate. I
Uh, I can do Tuesday if everyone wants Tuesday. I don't care. I don't care which day it is. <laughs> but the point is, is clearly people need some additional time to digest what's in front of them. Some of the changes we've made. Staff needs some time to reflect, uh, maybe on what else can be done. So that's that's my motion. Tuesday at six o'clock. Second. Alder Johnson makes a motion to adjourn until Tuesday at six o'clock. It was seconded by Alder Scannell. It's non-debatable. So all in favor will signify by oh, saying aye. Oh, it's non-debatable, Alder. Uh, that's the rule. Wait, that, vote that's, no, it, guys. It, it, don't, don't okay, call that's, vote that's fine, but vote it's no. parliamentary procedure. Vote no, guys. Motion, motions to adjourn are not debatable. All in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay? No. Board. We can use the board. fails Alder Burnett yeah thank you I the reason I voted no I wish I could have explained it but if Robert's rules is Robert's rules I, I I'm okay with adjourning I'm okay with staying here I'm okay going director to director perhaps the mayor can chime in if you were to reduce the levy by 10 percent what would that look like five percent give us options that's reasonable that's understandable that's acceptable don't buy any any argument to the contrary I do think that we could adjourn, but uh, aside from the council doing our homework, which we all have done uh, and will continue to do, I know it's a little more difficult for newer members. I've been there, so I understand. But you know, put in the motion to adjourn, we could put something where you know the directors should come back with a list of ideas to reduce the increased levy by five percent, ten percent, fifteen percent, twenty, and twenty-five percent. So as we come forward with ideas, the administration and his staff, the directors, should be able to come to the table with similar ideas. Otherwise, we're going to be right back where we are. Some of us are going to make real tough cuts and recommendations and might not pass. And let's do that. So I, I'd be in favor of that. But um, I also think we should get to work right now. So I'm not going to make a motion. But I uh, definitely don't think we should adjourn with the way that the motion was just presented. Thank you. Alder Scannell. <clears throat> well, I, I, I'm for adjourning and everybody taking some time and staff doing some work, but I would, any recommendation by staff as far as reducing the budget, I want to know what the cost of that is in service if we're giving direction to staff. Come back to us with a reduction and what does that reduction mean so that we can make an informed decision of what we want and what we don't want. Thanks, Alder. Yep. Thank you. Additional comments? Yeah. Can we just go director to director and just ask what their suggestions are to kind of reduce their budget? Off the tops of their heads? Sure, why not? That'll be, that'll be productive. All right, so I'll make a motion. If Mr. Mayor, if you're willing to entertain a motion, I'd make one. That, there is no motion really that would be in order right now. We're on referral, a petition and communications or adjournment. So you'd have to you can't make a motion to no. direct staff to do so. No. A no, point of order. You, no, you turn. can't. You have to go back to something, which you certainly can. We haven't handled the budget. Yeah, we haven't handled the budget. Three, right? J3? No, we, no, we voted it down. That's the vote. Oh. You're, the, you're the chair, obviously, but I'm going to ask for Attorney Bunger for no, an I opinion. mean, Alder, there are all kinds of parliamentary options. You have to go back to a previous item. So reconsider something. Reconsider option. Um, I'd like to make a motion to re reconsider resolution three under resolution. Second. Alder uh, Burnett makes a motion to reconsider the third resolution that was seconded by Alder Johnson. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Um, I'd like to make a motion to refer, refer the budget back to the administration and his department heads and find, with options to reduce the increased tax levy, which is about $5.2 million, 
uh, and tell us what reductions at 5% of that figure, 10% of that figure, 15% of that figure, 20% of that figure, and 25% of that figure would look like. And, and uh, reconvene on Tuesday, next Tuesday. Motion made by Alder Burnett, seconded by Alder Weary, Alder Scano. And that there is, along with that dollar amount, what that means as far as services or to the city employees or whatever effect that has. That I want that corresponding. And I make a motion, an amendment. You didn't add that. You just add the, you know, we get a spreadsheet. Sure. Uh, okay, so I, I make an it's amended implied, that. But I, that's fine. Yep. So, so we're asking our de department heads to prepare five different scenarios. Maybe we're asking you, Mr. Mayor. You don't have to get an attitude here. We're just right. trying to come yeah, up that, with that'll, ideas. That'll, that'll be real, that'll be we're really, really, asking you that. Really easy how, to how, do. how about you're the that'll executive? That'll be really easy to do. How about you just pick one number? Keep it Why? Everybody. Come on. Uh, it's a motion. So Alder Scannell uh, has an amendment that he was contemplating. Did you offer that, Alder Scannell? Yep, I offered that amendment that it, it has a corresponding uh, what the effect is of that. Of course. Yeah. Is there a second for it? Second. Seconded by Alder Hutchison. Just a, yeah. On the amendment, Alder Johnson? Yeah, maybe more of a question, and maybe I'm just not understanding this. Uh, and if that's the case, please explain to me. But we're saying to come back with those scenarios on, on the proposed increase, but that proposed increase isn't equitable across every department. So how does that work? This question for Alder Burnett. Yeah, I mean, I thought of that. Obviously, some of our departments have very low tax levy support, and some have very large tax levy support. All I'm saying is we need ideas. That's all I'm suggesting. I'm not saying we're going to approve them. I'm not saying that the decisions or the recommendations that they make will be easy, and I do think it's going to be not in an equitable way, but make an amendment then. I'm just saying well, no, we, no, we it, advance it. So if the council is going to be expected to do the hard work of considering things, which I'm willing and able and I have done, and all of them have as well, then I think uh, we can expect the administration, the mayor, chief of staff, chief of operations, and all the department heads to kind of in a good faith and a goodwill gesture to do the same. So otherwise we're we have just... have done the same. Uh, I don't know. Alder you you max, max the tax. As the other no, we said. didn't. Alder Stevens? You certainly did. I'm questioning coming back on Tuesday. That's giving our staff 48 hours to turn around and give us major cuts to this budget. And it took weeks to this budget you know I'm I'm gonna say it might take staff seven days to return to us we're, we're putting a lot of pressure on our directors for 48 hours to turn around to basically slash this budget make an amendment Alder so if we make can maybe at my I can I make an amendment to this sure. I would suggest that we come back in a week two weeks and this will give enough time for our directors to really slash this budget not slashing anything, Alder. You want to know something? I bet you from DPW. One You're not Alder you, Burnett. DPW, one of the first things he's going to slash is probably our trash and recyclable. Well, shame on him. No. Alder Burnett. That money, that, right. that'll be contracted out, and our, our residents in, this district, in, the, in our city will be, have a monthly bill for that service. Right now, it's through their taxes. He has a hard decision right now. It's a big part of his budget. So giving 48 hours, I think, is uncalled for. We need to give them time. And I think a week should be efficient. So I would make an amendment that we come back the week of Thanksgiving. So Alder Stevens makes a motion um, amending Alder Scannell's amendment. Uh, is there a second for it? For the 22nd, just to clarify. You said the week of Thanksgiving. It's the Tuesday. Tuesday, yeah. I'll second. I'll 22nd. Second. Second. Seconded by Alder Stoyer. It's a point of inquiry. Is, I mean, is Johnson. Director Ellenbecker's, uh, is, is that enough time? Great question. It seems like a lot of time. So I, I want to make sure we're meeting our deadlines, even though there's not a deadline. It seems like there is. <laughs> there is the deadline is uh, next Wednesday, November 16th. The information is due to the county so that they can start preparing tax bills. That would have to be a final budget from the city of Green Bay. We'd have to get an exception from them to submit them later, but they do start printing them by the end of November, so they need that information to load in their system and start running tax bills. So correct me if I'm wrong, it seems like Tuesday the 15th would be the latest that we could do that. 
yeah, to reconvene just, and still meet that yep deadline. i'm just confirming the brown county um calendar said that we have to have it into them by the 16th again that's that was their date that they asked for us to submit can we ask for an extension Further discussion on Alder Stevens' amendment? Alder Stoyer? Well, the deadline's our, our hands may be tied, so. Do you withdrawing your, make, uh, Alder Stevens makes a motion to withdraw his amendment for a second? I don't think there was a second, right? Yeah, so there was. There was. Yeah, I, I Is there a second for withdrawal? Second. Second by Alder Scan. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The amendment is withdrawn. And we're still on Alder Scannell's amendment. Uh, no, my amendment stands. Yeah, we're, we're on it. Oh, right now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Alder Weary on Alder Scannell's amendment. Sure. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Uh, his amendment was to bring what information or how it would be affected. Right? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, and obviously for that, you know, in past budgets, we had gaps you know, where we had to meet and we would take a recess and department heads would come forward with some really creative ideas. The fire department, God bless them, was always at the front of proposing ideas on ways to solve things. They always were. Uh, others were as much, you know, were, but not as much. So there's ways to do this. Do, do not bring back the most painful poison pills. You think we're angry now, bring back poison pills, you know? We've been, we've been given a directive from the people of Green Bay to have a good budget. We're sending it back because it was a bad budget. So don't put this on us. It was a bad budget. If you had brought a good budget, we wouldn't be doing this right now. Okay? So get some pizza, get your jammies. It might be an all-weekend jam session. That's fine. Thank you. See you Tuesday. Thank you. Any other comments? Alder Morgan and Alder Hutchison. Just going back to my past history, I know... I didn't have to do the budgets, but for some reason I was called on a lot by my supervisors to come up with ideas, because in the county, our old uh, county execs, uh, Holloway, Keene, a bunch of them, they told us, you've got to cut 8%, 10%, and we did it. We had to do it, you know? So, I, you know, I'm going to be the first one that'll be fighting to get the police and fire everything they can get, but we got to join together. Um, I talked to an older person that said that they don't know what they're going to do now. They had to refinance because the roof blew off and stuff. Well, now they're budgeted their escrow for a certain amount. They don't know where they're going to get the extra money. So I'm saying we got to do what we can to help the older people and all the citizens of Green Bay. Alder Hutchison? Um, I think the number of alternatives is, is high for the time allotted because every alternative is a lot of time and figuring. So I think we should go down to just two. 5%, 15%, I don't know. But, but having four or five is kind of crazy because each one is an iteration that takes a lot of time, and we don't have time. Well said. Elder Campbell? I just want some clarification from Attorney Bungart. I thought before you said when the question was brought up before on the time that it had to be handed to the county. So I'm confused on that. So can you clarify what you said before? Yes, yeah. so I said that there is no hard and fast date for us to pass it, but there is a deadline by which we have to turn over our figures or our, our budget over to the county so that the property tax bills can be printed in time. And So there's no deadline for us there's a deadline for the county, which effectively gives us one, but it's not it's not written in law that we have a hard and fast date by which we can pass, by which we have to pass the budget. So I would still support Alder Stevens' time. As I said, I never have enough time to look at everything. I think we gotta give the staff time to do it too, so I'm just trying to be fair to so the following Tuesday. I know. Thanks, Alder. Any just, other comments? I wanted clarification on it. We're on Alder Scannell's amendment. We are on Alder Scannell's amendment. <coughs> Alder Scannell, you repeat your amendment? And can, it, can, I, can I amend my amendment? Shall I, that we do five 
and 15% of uh, the budget increase and corresponding uh, effects of those cuts uh, be presented to the council. When? Uh, I didn't put a time. Uh, That's in the Lutheranet's motion. Yeah, uh, well, the county, I don't, I don't know what the consequences are if we just thumb our nose at the county, and I don't know that we can guarantee that they will give us more time, so I would think it's gonna have to be by the 15th at the latest, which is Wednesday, I believe, right? I don't know if there's any committee meetings on that Wednesday. Tuesday is the 15th? So, um, I think it, it's gonna have to be the 15th. I don't think somebody knows that the uh, county's a good idea, <laughs> and I don't know that we can count on them giving us the extra time. And what if they don't? You know, then what? You know, so uh, let's just meet at the 15th. Um, perhaps we're gonna ask the county, and if they do, then we can always amend the, uh, just that time over. But, so it's to five and 15 percent? No. So that's your, that would be another amendment. Right. An amendment to your amendment? Amendment to my amendment. I'm amending like crazy Is here. Is there a second for Alder Scannell's amendment? All right, seconded by Alder Stoyer. Discussion, Alder Burnett? Yeah, I'm against the amendment. Again, the, the tax levy increased 5.2 million. We're not asking to cut overall levy. We're asked to cut the right. the increased levy. 10% would be 500, 5% uh, would be about a quarter million. 15% would be 780. I'll tell you right now, cut 5%, uh, there's just ARPA things that we could do. Maybe we do that now. Uh, I've, maybe, uh, already, I've already, give, already given you one. I know, I know. That's, <laughs> then do it. What's that? Do it. Say it, then do it. I know, but again, it, <laughs> oh, it's just, I'm not, the reason I'm not doing it is because I'm putting it back on the staff to oh. include that as an option. They can use ARPA as a possibility to reduce it. People can whisper and say what they want, but what I'm doing is rather practical. I do like the idea. I, I suggested ARPA at the committee level, so it's not like unheard of that now it's out of, out of the ordinary that I would suggest that. So 10% would only be half a million. You know, if it's 20% uh, of the 5 million, that's 1 million. Our committee, our council made that recommendation. The, the mayor, his chief of staff, and the department heads can do the same. So. Yeah. So, so we're still on Elder Scandal's amendment. 20% with the line. Well, I think we need to dispense with the amendment as you've already articulated. Yeah, there wasn't a second for it, right? There was, Elder Story. Oh, so he regrets it. So I, I, uh, he did. <laughs> all right, all in favor of Elder Scandal's amendment signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Wait, what is yours? Yes. Oh. <laughs> I don't think everybody knew what the. I didn't. Yeah, see. You don't even know. <laughs> right, because we didn't. Right. Yes. So, Alder's, uh, Alder Scandal's amendment was to have two scenarios 5 and 15% reductions into the level increase. Right. Let me resend my amendment. Is there a motion to. A second is resend my amendment. Second. Okay. All in favor, saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Now. Ayes have it. So, so a 20%. This cut is a new, on, this is a this new is amendment. A new amendment. 20% cut of the increase. With a line. I'm sorry. That's okay. With a line of the consequence of that increase um, by next Tuesday, 6 o'clock. Be there, be square. Second. So your amendment is just for a 20% reduction? Just a 20%. No, we don't need to worry about any others. 20%. Okay. Is there a second for that? Is there a second? Second. Just a point second of order. Alder Johnson. Is, is, that, is that expectation then that that recommendation is coming from the mayor's office? Because again, I go back to 20% is not the same for every department. So right. are you expecting that 20% to come directly from the mayor then? And he's got to corral all the departments to figure out how to make up that 20%? I, I want to make sure staff's got clean direction on how right. to do that. Uh, I, I don't know how some staff, some staff, there's no way they could do 20%. It's, it's just got to be an overall dollar. Amount. It's just got to, yeah, overall 20%. Right. And I just want to make sure that that's clearly understood. Yep. Overall 20%.
So Alder Scannell makes an amendment to Alder Burnett's motion, um, which is just to limit it to a 20% reduction in the increased levy, um, and then associated you know, impacts of that reduction. Is there a second for that? Second. Second by weary discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. We're on Alder Burnett's motion. Uh, uh, Director Grenier, did you have something? Just a suggestion that we may want to possibly, knowing what the number is, okay, if, if the number you're gunning for is 20% of the 5.2, so we're talking just north of a million dollars. To recess for a half an hour, we got the department heads here. Operations Chief Fall gave me a, gave me a heck of an idea, so I've been talking about it with Director Ellen Becker. I just wanted we need a half an hour to see if we can flush this out. Okay. But the, the the short answer is everything that we took in this year's budget that used to be bonded and we put in the operational budget, we're taking it back out and we're sending it to bonding. And that doesn't, that doesn't affect us. Okay, this is what I was worried about. Refer it back to the department heads and then everything we come up with, you tell us, no, that's not good. Then you give us direction. Tell us what programs you want cut. Is anyone interested in that recess? Uh, Johnson. Look, I, I, I'm interested in the recess. Uh, if if additional options can be articulated, if if that's not possible within 30 minutes, then I'd be more comfortable waiting until Tuesday. Um, you know, we've been directing staff for a long time to stop bonding for operational, and I appreciate what Director Guineer said that that's the way to solve it. But boy, wouldn't we be a bunch of contrarians? contradicting ourselves over the directive that we've given staff. So um, the other thing that I'm, I'm concerned about, and of course, you know, Alder Burnett's brought it up to some applause in the gallery using ARPA. Guess what, guys? That doesn't reduce the expenses. And when we're sitting in this room next year, it's going to be how do we come up with all of those ARPA subsidized expenses and the increase on top of it next year? So go ahead and use ARPA, and you're going to be sitting in the same spot next year, only with a harder conversation. So, if you, look, again, I, I, I'll support a, a recess, but I, I'm also sincere in saying that if that's not enough time for staff to do what this body's asking you to do, which, of course, we haven't voted on yet, I, you know, if that's not enough time, then I'd just be more comfortable waiting till Tuesday. But yeah, and I, I just don't think there are too many other ideas that could, could I agree. be brought forward in a half an hour. I agree. Um, so I think we have a sense for, for what could be proposed. Um, so we are on Alder Burnett's motion as amended. Um, that has been seconded. All in favor uh, will signify. Uh, Alder Burnett uh, proposed a motion which has been amended to come back on Tuesday, November 15th at 6 p.m. with a 20% reduction in that 5.2 million um, with the associated impacts. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. All in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Um, we're on petitions and communications. On adjournment. Move to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Alder Johnson, seconded by Alder Scannell. It's too late, I'm sorry. Yeah. We're, we're in the middle of a roll call now. She had her hand up before he even said is it. Is it an urgent communication? I'll submit it after. All in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. We're adjourned. <laughs>